very well and going as they go for the home stretch in this Mountain West Conference season. Cougars have been very consistent, but it's been Jekyll and Hyde for San Diego State, starting at the quarterback position just and run the football well if they're going to have success against BYU tonight. There's one of your key players right there. We will watch him right from the get-go. Remember the last time BYU came here unbeaten, they were playing in the Holiday Bowl, and they went on to win the national championship. Aztecs are hoping to spoil the Cougars' party here tonight. We're back to kick it off in just a minute. On and off the field, visit your local AT&T wireless authorized dealer. This Sports West College football presentation is brought to you by Delta Airlines, who asks, how do you want to fly? Panasonic wireless phones for the way you live. Dodge, in a perfect world, everything would be different. And by your local AT&T wireless authorized dealers. Your world, close at hand. 26th meeting between the Cougars and the Aztecs. Ted Tolner hoping to follow what he did last year with a win in Provo. BYU has won 15 of the last 18. And again, the 26th meeting. San Diego State has won the toss and will receive Aaron Edmonds' kickoff. The kickoff brought to you by Cricket Communications, Comfortable Wireless, and by Nokia Mobile Phones. Nokia, connecting people. All right, playing away we go. Edmonds rips into it, back to receive Dante Gamble and Derek Lewis. And out comes Gamble, trying to turn the corner. Cougar coverage team does a nice job. San Diego State will take over at their 12-yard line. Take a look at the starting lineups for you, brought to you by Verizon Wireless. Veteran offensive line for the Aztecs. Great story will develop with Chester Pitts along with Houghton, Ingram, Moreno, Darby up front. In the backfield and skilled positions, Tolliver, Gelt, Tolliver, one of the ones to watch up near the top of the Mountain West Conference. Larry Ned in the lineup. We'll see how effective he is. And Lon Sheriff, as Blaine told you, will get the start. Boy, and watch how Larry Ned performs early. He had the ankle taped underneath the shoe, and he's got it taped on top of the shoe, so a double layer and they need him to be effective. He gets the ball right off the bat. Here he goes, plowing forward for what looks like about five yards. Let's check the defense, Blaine. Well, on that defensive line, watch the guy number 51, or for, for uh, 95, Efo peeling in the middle. He has got to collapse the middle of that uh, run offense for San Diego State. A big physical group of linebackers led by the leading tackler, Justin Enna, and then Gennaro Guilford. Four interceptions leads the Cougars in that secondary. Ned right on his average, comes in averaging 5.2, got five on the first carry, a good sign for Aztec fans. Ned's left ankle heavily taped, you can see it in white there, and they're gonna try him again. Coming around the far side, turning the left side, looks like it's good enough for first down yardage. Dustin Staley coming up from the strong safety position to make the stop for BYU along with Justin Enna. And this is exactly what San Diego State wants to be able to do. If they can effectively run the football early, it's gonna make Lon Sheriff's job much easier as you look at Ted Toner in his eighth season. You see the record there. Ted Toner, one of the great offensive minds in all of football. Good question. Struggling a little bit here, 19 starters returning. Frankly, he said he thought that they'd be further along, particularly at the quarterback position, but he says, hey, we've had a lot of good games. We've played well. We have a lot of ability. He still thinks they're going to play good football this season. Ned again carving it up. Runs into three Cougars. Brett Kiesel right in the middle, along with Ryan Denny and Paul Wackenhorst. Three on one there, and that's what it's going to take sometimes to bring Ned down. He's a big, strong guy, 5'11", 215 from Moreno Valley, California. And what he does such a good job of is finishing off his runs. He always gets low as you see a big hit from Ryan Denny, big physical defensive end, really the team leader on that defense and the sack leader. Last year when Ned was out near the end of the season, it sagged the Aztecs rush game, and they averaged only a little more than two yards per carry as Sheriff incomplete to his... H-back Gray McNeil, another great story, Gray McNeil, a couple of years ago, first team All-Mountain West Conference tight end, then blew out the ACL, but he's come back strong. That's right, he got a medical hardship, just played uh, in that first game last year in 2000 and came back. His dad and uncle both played in the National Football League, so a great football legacy in the McNeil family, and uh, that's an unusual drop for him. First key play for the Aztecs. We talked about it's key that they keep the Cougar offense off the field. Third and seven. Sheriff's going to put it up again. Crossing pattern. 
A little shy of the first down, though. Nice play, Isaac Kelly all over his man. They go to McNeil again, but on comes the Aztec punt team. So a short possession, and Mike Regal goes back to field the punt, presumably, from Brian Simjanovsky, who comes in leading the Mountain West Conference, eighth in the nation, up near 45 yards a kick. And that's saying something, because you figure half of his games are at home at sea level, and usually one of the punters from Wyoming or Air Force or BYU that play at elevation lead the conference. So to lead the conference down where the air is a little heavier is really saying something. That's right. Aaron Edmonds led the conference last year for BYU, 43-6. Simjanowski doing a nice job and gets under one again. Driving spiral, Mike Regal picks it up, looking for some room. Trying to sideline. Seals in a hurry. And the Cougars will take over just across their 20-yard line. And we'll take a look at the BYU starters. Veteran, physical, offensive front, led by Jason Sikanik up front. Behind him, so many skilled players. Again, leading the nation in scoring. Spencer Need at tight end. Reno Mahe, healthy. They're expecting him to start to play much better as he did earlier in the season. Ned Stearns and Luke Staley. Brandon Doman at quarterback, having a huge year. 9-0. and He's won every start in his college career at BYU. Little flare pass out to Mahe, turning the corner. Short pickup. Let's take a look at the defensive starters for San Diego State. A guy I love to watch in the middle of that front, Jerome Haywood. He is a guy at 5'9 and 280 pounds that just enjoys the game of football, and he's fun to watch. Good group of linebackers, Jomar Butler, the leading tackler among those linebackers, number two on the football team. And a physical group, the leading tackler on this team in that secondary, Will Demps, number 47 from that strong safety position. And uh, he has seven tackles for loss, so he likes to play up close to the line of scrimmage and come. Up near the top of the conference in overall tackles, Doman escapes and bounces it out to his tight end, Spencer Need, who was open. What a job Gary Croton has done. Best start ever for a Cougar head coach. 11th job, Blaine, in 20 years of coaching. He's been around. He's paid his dues. Worked in the NFL for the Chicago Bears. Did a nice job before that at Louisiana Tech. And uh, has come home to his dream job, he says. Well, and he certainly brings a wealth of different experiences, which I think uh, adds to his credibility as a head coach. He's, he's learned under a lot of different coaches and a lot of different systems, so he brings many facets to his offensive game. From the shotgun, third and five. Protection breaking down, strip, fumble recovery. Looks like it is the Aztecs. What a play up front by Jerome Haywood. We didn't even get a chance to talk about what he'd be doing. Butler up there as well. Jomar Butler coming in to make the play. Well, and Doman has plenty of time. This is a coverage set. Good coverage in the secondary. You see San Diego State locked up. Demps on the tight end doing a good job. And it was Butler who came from behind. Doman trying to buy himself some time, did not feel Butler behind him. And Butler saw the football sticking out there, made a great strip, and then had the presence to get on the football. This team has caused 10 fumbles, but only recovered one until then. A big break early on for the Aztecs. Good situation for Lon Sheriff down in deep in Cougar territory. And he's going to try Ned right away. Plenty of running room, running right through people down to about the BYU 5. And if San Diego State can get an early lead in this football game, that's exactly where they want to be. Then they can really play ball control. Watch the big hole created on the right side, the seal block and the kickout block on the outside. Just a great job by Chester Pitts on that kickout block on the right side to open a giant hole for Larry Ned. The ankle looks okay. Running straight ahead. Larry Ned's looking like he's got his normal quickness. What a confidence boost this would be for Lon Sheriff. They can punch this in right away. Trying net again, looking for room, trying to cut on. You see there, he seems to be a little hesitant playing. Well, and, and that's what we need to see. See him run to his left. When he's going to run to his left, he's got to plant on that left ankle and cut back inside. Now watch the ISO. The last one, he went to the right. See him trying to cut off that left ankle, having a little trouble, and goes down. Now, I don't know if that's because of pain or because that's so tight, has so much tape on it, he feels like he's in a cast. But when he ran to his right, cutting on that healthy ankle, he was fine. Going to his left, he seemed to struggle that time. Levi Madrietta, the free safety came in to close, but Ned had already fallen down. 
Second and five now. And again, ripped up. Justin Anna blowing through and blowing up the play. Boy, Justin Anna lined up and came on the blitz. The San Diego State offensive line didn't seal down. He comes through clean, untouched, and makes the read on the play. He knows that Larry Ned's the guy that's going to get the football. And Anna leads this team in tackles. 56, six tackles for loss. Come into this game, make that number seven right now. You talk about a deep leader in, in the terms of big hits, and that was one right there. Now third and goal. Big chance for the Cougars to deny him and force a field goal. Sheriff with some options. Tipped away. Gennaro Guilford made a play on the ball, knocked it away. Intended. Down there for J.R. Tolver. Right up at the top of the Mountain West Conference, second in yards per game up near 79. But BYU stiffens and on comes Tommy Kurofsky, who's six for seven, perfect four for four inside the 40. He's the cousin of the punter, Brian Simjanovsky. Pretty much a chip shot, like an extra point here, Blaine. Well, San Diego State should get points out of this. But that kind of turnover you really need to turn into a touchdown. And it's blocked. And here comes BYU. They've scooped it up. That's Ryan Denny picking him up and putting him down. Does he have enough to finish? He gets the block. He's going to go in for a touchdown. turnaround here for BYU. The defense comes in, picks up the offense after the fumble deep in San Diego State territory. They force the field goal. They block it. And look at Ryan Denny. 6'7", 275 pounds. And he was flat sprinting. Boy, and this is why the National Football League likes this guy, because he can run. You see the block on the inside by Justin Enna, who makes the block. And then Ryan Denny was on the outside, picked it up. 275 and he's running the ball like a linebacker down the field and look at the effort by Brandon Heaney number 34 to run the last bit of interference and get Denny into the end zone extra point drilled and Justin Anna blocks it Ryan Denny returns it in for Ted Tolner ecstasy turned to agony in just a couple of seconds BYU from nowhere leading 7-0 early in the first Ryan Denny sucking on some oxygen, and uh, I guess he deserves it, Blaine. Romping with the blocked field goal attempt. He went about 90, and he was he was going cl close to 90. Well, I'll tell you what, if, if you want to send a film to the National Football League, send that one. If there's any questions, that guy can run. It was answered right there. Out comes Gamble again. Looking for some room. Crosses the 20-yard line. Now let's look at the game plan presented by your local AT&T wireless services authorized dealers. Your world close at hand. Blaine, what's the game plan? Well, for BYU, they need to get an early start, which they just did. If they can jump out to early lead, it will take San Diego State out of their ball control game plan and exploit matchups. Get uh, Reno Mahe in the slot, get him matched up with linebackers, and then for San Diego, San Diego State, play keep away. Don't let BYU's offense have the ball. And then the big one, no turnovers. They just had a block kick for a touchdown. And so already, that's a turnover. BYU turned the ball over, and then San Diego State, with that block kick, gave the gift right back. Good news, though, for the Aztecs. Ned appears to be okay. Six carries, 26 yards already. And that's a crucial element to their game plan here today. Sheriff on the out route. Catchable ball. But Derek Lewis unable to haul it in. 6'2", 185-pound senior from New Orleans by way of Sacramento Community College. What an athlete Derek Lewis is. Well, and last year, Derek Lewis was the big play guy for this team. He, he averaged over 20 yards a catch, and this year having a hard time getting deep. His long play of the year is only 39 yards, and they'd like nothing better than to get him behind the secondary because he's a blazer and uh, let him get a deep one. Sheriff second and 10. Tries net again, runs right into the middle, and Jeff Coward says, you're not going to run by me. Coward makes the play. Well, for BYU, those tackles are so important in this game because San Diego State likes to knock you off the football. They have to have Efo Peely and Jeff Coward and Ryan Gunderson, those guys that play those inside spots, be able to maintain that line of scrimmage. And you saw Coward at that time 
come around his man, swim through, and then slide down the line of scrimmage and take away that cutback lane that Larry Ned loves so much. He likes to attack the, the line of scrimmage where the play's designed to go and then cut it back, and you've got to stay home and get there. Big third down play again for Sheriff and the Aztecs. Has his man for a short gain. Cut back Tolbert with some pretty moves, but looks like he'll be a yard or two shy of the first down. Gennaro Guilford coming up to make the play. And once again, not part of the game plan, the quick possession, giving it back to BYU. Guilford making a nice play as Tolver had a little bit of room after the catch, but unable to pick up the first down. And Tolver is the top receiver for this team this year. 39 receptions coming into the game, over 550 yards receiving, and uh, they need him, him to have a good football game. Sim Janowski comes in, and last time he absolutely ripped one. Comes in leading the conference. We'll discuss that. 6'3", 230-pound junior from Escondido. And Mike Regal looking to try to make something happen on the other end for BYU. I think Regal moved back a little bit this time. He had a backpedal big time on that last punt. Comes in averaging just over nine yards per punt return. Long of 45. Janowski rips into it. Another driving spiral. Plenty of hang time as well. And there's a flag. Looks like they didn't give him enough halo room. And Regal looking for running room. Nothing doing there. Lane, you have the same call there? Yeah, good good coverage that time by the entire San Diego State cover team. But the, the point of attack when Mike Regal caught the football, that, that halo was that halo was violated. And you've got to give him a, a cushion. So we're going to hear the call here from the official. No contact. Just just silent just, treatment. Yeah, for just you. a five yard. I thought he was going to give You've got to give him a little area about that big around the, the receiver. Now, watch his right there. That halo is violated. He tries to do his best job of, of getting away, trying to time that, but uh, the flag goes down. Raquel gets nothing on the return. It's only a five yard penalty. And so BYU will start out on the 26. Sim Janowski with a couple of 50 yard punts. You can see why he's a good punter. Gets big hang time. Cougars in business here up near the 30 yard line. They'll try Luke Staley for the first time. Second in the conference and rushing and picks up a huge gain. Comes in averaging nine yards a carry. And that was about nine. Will Demps coming up to make the play. When Staley's so explosive, he's very, very strong. He's just under 230 pounds, so he can run it inside. And as soon as you think that's all he's going to do, he'll bounce it to the outside and run right around you. It runs a sub 4-4 in the 40. A good hole this time opened up by BYU's offensive line. You see Dustin Reichert out in front on the pole coming from the tackle spot leading up the hole for Luke Staley. Second and one gives you so many options, and here he goes. Shows you a little hurdle, cutting out again, turning the corner. Up near the 40-yard line, easy first down yardage. Kirk Morrison, the redshirt freshman for the Aztecs, bringing Luke Staley down. Staley's junior from Tualatin, Oregon. When Morrison's able to kind of trip Staley up as he comes over the top and just kind of gets him from the backside. You mentioned a redshirt freshman. He trips him up from the backside. The difference for Luke Staley this year, first of all, an experienced offensive line, but secondly, he's healthy. And this is really the first time he's been healthy for an entire year. In the offseason, he was able to work hard and uh, and feels strong in every game this year. Play fake to try a little crosser. Mike Regal just rocked. That uh, play sniffed out very nicely. Kirk Morrison, Morrison again. once again. The six foot, 230 pound freshman read this one well. He's reading uh, Brandon Doman dropping in the middle of the field. And as soon as the throw comes off, he makes his way down the line of scrimmage. And look at that sure tackle right around the legs. Jerome Haywood also in close on that tackle. Morrison replacing Bo Ricky, the starter, is out for the season with a knee injury. Getting a lot more playing time a lot earlier than he thought. Staley making a man miss. And picks up about six or seven. There was some 
guy who had a good shot at him before Andy Brigham finally ran him down. Well, and, and when the team runs the option, your safeties have got to make tackle, tackles. That time, the strong safety, Will Demps, the leading tackler on this team, a very physical guy. He came up, and you got to brace yourself and try to deliver a blow on Staley, or he'll run over the top of you. That time, Demps lunged a little bit, and Staley did a little pirouette move and went right by him. Third and seven. Another key play for the Aztecs defense. Trying to keep the Cougar offense off the field. Oh, plenty of time. Crossing route. Missed. Regal. And it's going to bring on Aaron Edmonds, BYU's very capable punter. Well, the Mountain West Conference has some outstanding punters this year. And these two teams, two at the top in the conference. San Diego State has a lot of former walk-ons. Well, here's one for BYU. He says his mother, Debbie, taught him how to punt. He said she's never punted, but she's, she's a big football fan, watched a lot of it on TV, and used to take him out and drill him, and obviously it's paid off. Well, this BYU offense has been so effective that Edmonds has gotten very little work, and you saw that 39.7 average, a little misleading, because multiple times he's been asked to pooch punt this year and has done a great job of kicking balls inside the 20. 11 of his 24 have landed inside the 20, and this is Gamble with a return looking for some room around the corner. Had some hope, but Cougars snuff it out. Like Brady Papinga down on the tackle on the cover team for BYU. Good story there. Brady just said, hey, I want to play coach, and so Gary Croton moved him to defensive end now because he wasn't getting any time at tight end. You're watching college football on... Ads. It came Brooklyn and Blaine Fowler enjoying this Mountain West Conference game between BYU and San Diego State. Aztecs had an early break. BYU turned around, blocked a field goal, and Ryan Denny ran 90 plus yards for a touchdown, and that is the number right now. Lon Sheriff, first and 10, up near the 30. Larry Ned fakes the reverse. Plenty of running room. And then he runs into Paul Walkenhorst. And a 6'5, 255 pound sophomore wins that battle with Ned bringing him down. This Sports West College football presentation is brought to you in part by Dodge. In a perfect world, everything would be different. Paul Walkenhorst, is just a sophomore, 6'5", 255-pound linebacker. He's as big as a lot of defensive linemen, homegrown product for BYU just up the road in Highland, Utah. Came in this game with 34 tackles. So started eight games last year as a true freshman. Got a lot of experience. Sheriff off the play fake. Brett Kiesel breathing down, and Sheriff gets rid of it. Has Ned. Nice play to avoid big problems, and San Diego State has a first down. Good decision there by Sheriff. Avoided the sack and found his checkoff receiver. Well, and Larry Ned sitting in a hole in the zone right underneath in coverage. You can see he can still cut to his left without any problem off that right foot. Ran right by Paul Walkenhorst on a move. And uh, Ned sitting in the middle with his hands up right now going, come on, here I am, here I am. And Sheriff found him under pressure as he was going down. And you see he can cut to the right, makes one move past Walkenhorst, and then Justin Enna finally brings him down with the help of Ryan Denny. Ned closing in on 3,000 rushing yards. Only two players in Aztec history have done that if Ned joins him. The other one would be Marshall Falk. A pretty good play. Yeah, I'd say Ned, plenty of running room up near midfield before Gennaro Guilford comes to take his legs out from him. Well, in San Diego State, if they can run the ball effectively, they're a very solid defensive football team. And if they can stay with this running game and stay in this football game, their, their defense can win a football game for them. Well, no question. This is a big, strong, physical offensive line. Moreno, Ingram, Houghton, Pitts, Darby up front will create spaces. And with Ned healthy, that, that's the key to their performance here tonight. And, you know, he had... A record 40 carries at Colorado State, and they won that game. A tough place to play. Utah found that out today in Fort Collins. And Aztecs are a whole different team when he's doing what he's doing here. Ned running through people. Picks up about five as he lunges forward. And Larry Ned already with 10 carries, and we're still here in the first quarter. You mentioned that 40 carry game. Well, 10, and there's three minutes left in this first quarter. Well, you got to credit that big offensive line. You mentioned, you mentioned Chester Pitts and uh, the rest of the gang there, but it's a big physical group. 305, 315, 290, 290, and 290. They yep. can move some people. And the Cougars, you know, this season, if there's been a knock on the defense, it's their inability to stop the run game. They give up almost 200 yards on the ground. That's right near the bottom of the Mountain West Conference, seventh in an 18 league. Now they're going to try the big home run ball. 
Derek Lewis out there just beyond his reach. Brandon Heaney with some pretty good coverage. Lon Sheriff's throw just uh, about six inches off the fingertips of Lewis. We talked about Lewis last year being the pl big play guy. Those were the kinds of receptions he was catching last year, the big plays for touchdowns. But Brandon Heaney was in good position that time. Heaney's a guy that went to the Air Force Academy and was a quarterback there. They moved him to safety. He then transferred and sat out and came to BYU as a safety, and then they moved him to corner. So he's been all over the place in the Mountain West Conference the last couple of years, but has seemed to have found a home at cornerback for BYU. Second and 10 from the 44. Ned again looking for room. Has some. Picks up about four or five maybe before it's brought down by Justin Enna and Isaac Kelly. Kelly, the 6'4", 240-pound senior from American Fork High School. Three sacks on the season. What did BYU linebackers, 240, 265, 255. Those are, those are NFL back, uh, oh, yeah. backers. They're, they're, they're as big as, as a group as any in the country. And Sports Illustrated, at the beginning of the year, ranked that group as the second best group of linebackers in the country. Very physical group. The big play here, third and five. Kiesel. Trying to pressure. Big connection. Sheriff to his lumbering tight end. And you see right there why Gray McNeil was first team all Mountain West Conference tight end. He's playing H back these days, but 6'2 and 260 from Covina. He's just carrying people with him as they go inside the 15. Well, and that time, he lines up as the fullback in the eye. You know, we mentioned he plays H-back. He lines up all over the place. So he slips out of the backfield. A perfect touch throw by Sheriff. And this is what a 260-pound back out of the backfield can do for you. I mean, he is just running over people. Isaac Kelly is a big linebacker. Levi Madrieta is a physical safety, and he ran right over both of them before Heaney finally grabs a hold and gets some help. 24-yard pickup, and now Ned tries the middle. And he comes up a little shy of the 10-yard line. But the important thing for Ted Tolner and his offense is that Larry Ned appears to be fine. 11 carries for 48 yards already. Closing in on 3,000. He needs 71 rushing for 1,000 this season, but he's very close to going over 3,000 for his career. Only Marshall Falk has done that. But for San Diego State, the last time they got down here in the red zone, had to settle for a field goal attempt that was blocked. They need to get points on this trip. Come in averaging just 15 points a game. They know BYU's going to probably score. Look at Ned romping all the way in. And he's marked just shy of the end zone. Little smile on his face there. The key for San Diego State is this is a first down gain. And so they'll have first and goal right down at the goal line. Again, a big hole created by that physical offensive line of San Diego State. Again, Chester Pitts washed his man down. See Pitts right there, big number 70, just wash his guy down the line of scrimmage and open up that hole for Larry Ned. Ned would be my bet to get the ball here. He's responsible for nine of San Diego State's 13 touchdowns on the season and there he goes, but did he go in? No arms yet. I Looks like the stop was made. He may have lost a, a half a yard. Yeah, I think he lost a yard or a half a yard on that play. Ryan Denny sealing him and bringing him down. There he goes. Over 3,000 yards. Very rarefied turf there. Again, the, the workhorse of this offense leading the, uh, the conference in rushing coming in, and there was questions all week whether he could use in a boot the early part of the week, not even practicing the whole week, and he's going to try again. He'll walk in. Boy, what makes that yardage even more amazing is that last year, Larry Den was hurt all year, just nagging injuries and really bothered his performance last year, shoulder and leg injuries. And yet he's still been able to accomplish that 3,000 yards. feet. That's saying something. Unbelievable work for Larry Ned. Nine carries, 36 yards on this drive alone. And they're taking a page out of John Robinson and UNLV, who put Gary Croton right on the brink. They needed a miracle rally in the last minute to win in Las Vegas. San Diego State running the football on BYU very effectively. And Karofsky 
tacks on the extra point. So how about that? Six seconds to go in the first quarter. San Diego State ties it up. And we have the makings of a good ball game here. Aztecs right in the middle of it. Say goodbye to your fork and hello to McDonald's new Sausage McGriddle sandwich. The revolutionary new way to eat pancakes and sausage. Two griddle cakes, a sausage patty, and the taste of maple syrup in every bite. The new Sausage McGriddle sandwich, only at McDonald's. How's that fork situation? Copy. We're gonna need backup. Are you ready, Mom? And that one picked up by Steven Larson on the cover team and a short high kick. Raquel coming up and trying to field it on the run. It hit off his chest. It's the end of the quarter. Ted Tolner excited by the goings on with his defense and his offense is moving the ball well. We're tied after one. Welcome back to Qualcomm Stadium in San Diego. The San Diego State Aztecs needing to make some things happen in this one. Already have recovered two BYU fumbles, and right now they are in business inside the Cougar 25-yard line. Lon Sheriff, very efficient so far in the game. Larry Ned absolutely chewing BYU up. 15 carries, 63 yards, and a touchdown in the first quarter. Sheriff with some time, looking for the end zone. Just shy of that, incomplete. Let's take a look at the last Cougar turnover on the kickoff lane. Well, and Mike Regal was a very short high kick, and Regal had to sprint up and catch the football. And as a kick returner, you're used to being stationary and catching that ball. So he's coming up on the football, hits right off of his shoulder pads, and then San Diego State had good coverage with the high kick right there to recover it was Steven Larson. Sheriff with Ned by himself in the backfield. They'll try the draw. And he runs right through the arms of Ifo Pili, and Ned is in. Larry Ned did not practice all week, and Blaine, I, I say, who needs it? That's right, 16 rushes, 86 yards, showing no ill effects from the ankle. We thought he was having trouble cutting to his left, but he's not having any trouble running through tackles. Peely trying to bring him down, and Ned's so strong at 5'11 and 215 pounds that the powerful lower body takes it into the end zone for six. Garofsky for the point after. Just like that, San Diego State takes the gift on the kickoff and punches it in. Ted Tolner feeling very good about how things are going. It's just as he scripted the game plan, keep BYU's offense off the field and put up some early points. Aztecs in charge here. Playing, we've been hearing about BYU's quick scoring drives. How about that one for Larry Ned and company? 11 seconds, they turned the turnover into points this time. And Larry Ned takes it in from two yards out. You know, to this point in the football game, San Diego State has run 25 offensive plays, BYU only eight. And uh, that's the way you beat BYU, keep the offense off the field. Fair, fair catch called for by one of the Cougar up men. Let's look at the first quarter stats brought to you by Sinclair, where you, where you get gasoline and oil products that are simply unbeatable. Blaine? Well, we already mentioned this 112 to, to 12 here. That's a huge difference. Six first downs to one. And, and the big key, two turnovers. Those two turnovers have been very costly to BYU. And look at that time of possession. BYU only had the ball two minutes and 48 seconds in the first quarter. This is exactly what San Diego State wanted to have happen in that first quarter. Keep in mind, BYU comes in second only to the Florida Gators. Number two in the country total offense, up near 545 yards a game. They're not near that. And Luke Staley, after three touches in the first quarter, they put the ball back in his hands pretty quickly. Yeah, Staley's been effective. He had three touches, 19 yards to show for those three touches and to get it right to him in this first drive of the second quarter for BYU. Dylan Robles coming up to make the play for San Diego State. Four touches, 25 yards now for Luke Staley. Staley. 
Staley closing in on the Cougar single season touchdown mark and career touchdown mark. Just a junior. Doman backs up into the shotgun. Trying to make something happen and nothing doing as the Aztecs step up. Andrew Brigham picks up his third sack with a little bit of help from Kirk Morrison, the redshirt freshman, in on some plays here early. Yeah, we've called uh, number 34's Kirk Morrison several times here in this football game, coming on a blitz from his linebacker position. He's watching Brandon Doman as Doman starts to scramble. He's got him. You can't let Brandon Doman get out of that pocket. Morrison comes up and helps out there. But good pressure right off the bat. And this San Diego State team, we mentioned how good they are defensively, and they're looking every bit that here in the early going in this football game. Third and ten for the Cougar offense. Not used to being slowed down. They'll try down the middle. Reno Mahe looking for a flag, and there it is. He felt he was held. And what happened was he's working up the field, trying to get to the middle on a seam or post route. And uh, Jeff showed in on the coverage. Yeah. And he just, it wasn't, I don't think they'll call pass interference. They should call holding is what they should call because he wasn't there and they're going to call interference. But but it really was a hold. He was holding on to his arm before the ball was thrown. Didn't hit him after the ball was thrown. It, it's not going to make any difference. The same penalty anyhow is going to give BYU a first down. Well, any any defensive back coach will tell you if you're beaten deep, do anything. Just, Bring just the guy down. Hold. Just grab a hold. Mahe up near the top of the nation, 31 catches in his first four games. Then he got nicked up a little and was really beat up through the middle part of their season. 12 catches in the next three games, and now they're trying to work him back in as he's starting to feel better. He's got one catch. They get, got him the football in the first play of this game, a five-yard gain on a little hitch, and that's it so far. Doman over the middle. Big tight end. Spencer Need rumbling down inside the 40 of San Diego State. Jeff Schoen making the play. Spencer Need, a former junior college All-American at Rick's Junior College in Idaho. He's from Tetonia, Idaho. I've been to Tetonia, Idaho, and I'm going to tell you, that is one of the most beautiful places in the world, right on the backside of the Teton Mountains. This time he's looking like a mountain as he comes out of the right side of that BYU offense on a crossing route. And he is a load to bring down at 6'4 and 260 pounds after he catches the football. One of five BYU receivers who has three touchdown receptions on the season, and another one has four. The out route to Mahe, who's trying to make something else happen, lunges forward near first down yardage. The Cougars trying to get a little tempo into the offensive rhythm. Jomar Butler and Ricky Sharp making the play. This Sports West College football presentation is brought to you in part by Panasonic Wireless Phones. Panasonic for the way you live. And Jomar Butler working on the outside. He had a huge game against BYU last year. 16 tackles. And uh, so he's, he's no stranger to BYU's offense. Staley looking for some room. Bounces around. Short game. Dylan Robles sealing him off from anything bigger. You mentioned Joe Mar Butler. This is a guy who's been beat up something serious, the weak side linebacker. He's had a jam, well, jam toes, uh, strained calves, knee, shoulder. In practice this week, he said, I got to be out there. It's my last year. I'm not missing any games. He just will not let them keep him out of the lineup. Oh, he's a tough guy. He was the team MVP, uh, voted on as a team MVP last year. Had 112 total tackles, triple figures in tackles. And uh, you're right, he's just a flat-out tough guy. It doesn't matter if he's hurt, he's going to be out there. And they weren't sure he could be able to play, and they watched him warm up and watched him early and said, oh, I guess we better leave him out there. Claire Gosman asking him to run the clock down a little bit. Butler, 5'11", 215-pound senior from Carson. Gary Croton, very much concerned here. This game has gone just the way Ted Tolner has dictated. Doman pump fakes, gets around, looking for more rub, and decides to go down. 
And I'll tell you what San Diego State has done well early in this game. Doman, all year, when he tucks that ball down and looks for a place to run, has been able to find little lanes and make big plays out of nothing. What San Diego State has done, good coverage downfield. When he's tucking it and trying to run, they're closing all of the lanes down and containing him and not allowing him to find places to go. Look at the coverage up the field. Bam, bam, bam. Everybody covered down the field. And, and Doman has no place to go with the football. Third and nine. Little flip across, Mike Raquel with running room, flag down. First down if the flag is not against BYU. Well, that's usually where holding is called, back behind that offensive line. That's what it is. Jomar Butler with the collar on Raquel, but play doesn't matter. It's going back the other way. Holding, holding offense. 10 yards, previous spot, third down. It's tackle coming up. Let's look back at this one. Oh, yeah. Jerome right. Haywood wrapped up and thrown down. Boy, and sometimes to stop him, that's what you have yeah. to do. He's so relentless in coming. And, and that penalty is 10 yards from the pre previous spot. Fans may remember a few years ago that it used to be 10 yards from the spot of the foul. And if a lineman was holding 10 yards deep, it would be a 20-yard penalty. That rule changed. And Lavelle Edwards, BYU's former coach, very instrumental in getting that change at the coaches' conference saying that that's not fair to passing teams. Now it goes back to the previous spot, 10 yards from the original line scrimmage. Cougars came in leading the nation, or leading the conference in third down conversions. You see they've struggled here. And third and 18, Brandon Dolman says, oh, I'm out of time. i got to take a time out here. Going over to talk to Gary Croton. And they worked at it on their own in their own practice time with just the quarterbacks and the players. And uh, we talked to Coach Croton also about uh, the rankings. And, you know, they, they broke into the top ten. They're tenth uh, this week. And here's what he had to say about that. What I've mentioned to the team about the rankings is not to worry about it because we have so much football ahead of mm -hmm. us. And it's nice to have some recognition, and you know, you're, everybody says, oh, "Wow, you guys are ranked 10." And, and what's up about B, the the uh, BCS? You're not in the top 15, and you know, you know people are going to say that to them. Just don't worry about that because there's so much football ahead. People are going to lose every week, and if it's not us, you know, we'll move up. Mm -hmm. But we just we got to concentrate on each team one at a time. We can't think that we're somewhere where we're not. And where we're at right now is 7 and 0. We're not 13 and 0. So we were trying to get eight. No, that's the next step, and that's all we can focus and concentrate on. If we do that, we'll continue to climb, and, and then who knows what will happen at the end. Bowman, a little out route to Andy Ord, local kid from here, and there's a flag down there. Ord making the play. Jomar Butler and a real on the late, tackle. A real late flag, Tom, thrown all the way down at the 30-yard line, and that play not near enough for first down yardage, but now in field goal range for BYU. Personal foul, forget the field goal, Blaine, for the moment. That's that's a bad penalty for the Aztecs to take, setting BYU up now deep in the red zone. Boy, and if you're Ted Toner, you're thinking, okay, let's sit back. We'll let them have an underneath throw. We Good just ball. have to keep them. Personal foul, defense, half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. And, and you, you can see Ted Toner upset. And let's see at the end here, and what they're gonna call it on is, And I, you know, I, I don't think it was right there. At the ta It was behind the play. He was tackled on about the 20-yard line. The flag was thrown back on the 30-yard line. And, and so something happened behind that play. Ted Toner was visibly upset. And uh, a good stop and forcing a field goal. Now BYU has first down. And these red zone numbers, the Cougars have been body, But right now, wrapped up for a big loss. Bowman's protection breaking down, and, and you made a great point a minute ago. In past games, he's been able to stray and make plays, and Aztecs are not letting him do that. Well, it's because their defensive line and linebackers are playing as a unit. You know, sometimes you get a guy that has good pressure, and the rest of the defensive line leaves a lane. But this San Diego State defensive front is playing as a unit. They're staying in their lanes and not leaving any room for Doman to get through. The BYU's offensive line's only given up seven sacks on the season, and two already here tonight to San Diego State. Second and 16 now. You saw the graphic a minute ago, BYU. Incredible success in the red zone. And there's a fumbled snap and just all kinds of problems. And Doman sacked again. There's a flag down. We'll see what that is. 
Kirk Morrison and Jomar Butler saying hello to Mr. Doman again. Well, and Doman, he's having a hard time finding a place to run. Let's watch what the penalty is here. We're going to call a procedure on BYU. But uh, Doman's going to have to, if he can't get out there, he's got to throw the football away. He can't continue to take losses. He's got to find a receiver that's close to the sideline and get rid of it. Offense. Only six players on the line of scrimmage. Penalty is declined. Third down. He's up a third and a long way. But you've got to know as a quarterback when there's no more room and when it's time to just unload the football and avoid a loss. Third and 22 from the 25. Two fakes and a little flip back to Staley on a screen and he's looking for some room and runs into a whole bunch of men in black and wrapped up inside the 20 way short of a first down presumably that'll bring Matt Payne on to try a field goal for BYU well for BYU they had to get down inside the four yard line for a first down on the play and so just trying to make a play where they get Luke Staley ball see if he can make something big and get themselves into field goal range to try to bring this game a little closer Matt Payne, the freshman from North Ogden, Utah, 6'4", 247, 5 for 10 on the season, hit a 50-yarder, an important kick for the Cougars here. And he's drilled it. 14 to 10, BYU climbs back to within four. Remember, they average up near 49 points a game, so the Aztecs doing a wonderful job here. BYU making good on the Matt Payne 34-yard field goal. They go 60 yards in 12 plays. Took a lot of time off the clock, and the Aztecs will take that. A lot of time worked off. They're still in the lead. They only give up a field goal. Edmonds rips into that. It's going to be returned. Dante Gamble has some running room, trying to find the corner, and he'll cross the 30-yard line. A good field position for Lon Sheriff and Larry Ned. And let's see if San Diego State continues to be able to run the ball effectively against this BYU defense. This Sports West College football presentation is brought to you in part by Cricket Communications, making wireless simple, affordable, and worry-free. Stop by your local Cricket store or authorized retailer and pick up your Nokia phone today. Nokia, connecting people. See if the Cougars can find a way to slow down Larry Ned. Already has 86 yards on 16 carries and a couple of touchdowns. Here he goes again. And there he goes again. Picks up about five or six. That line creates some big holes. You know, on that offensive line, it's a, it's a big physical group. Both tackles are former walk-ins. We talked a little bit about Chester Pitts. This is a guy that didn't even play high school football, was bagging groceries a few years back. That's a great story. And, and former uh, all-conference player Kyle Turley said, you know, you ought to go walk on. You, know, you ought to go try to play. I think you can play football. He, he has worked himself into an NFL prospect at this point. He's got great speed, great feet. I say great speed for a 6'4", 305 yeah, I mean, pounder. Exactly. But uh, but he's worked himself into a very good football player. In high school, he threw the shot in discus. His mom didn't want him to play football, and his high school didn't play football. I mean, what a great story Chester Pitts is. He's caught the eye of NFL scouts. He says, I could go from bagging groceries to being able to buy one of everything at a grocery store. <laughs> and here comes the reverse. That's Derek Lewis picking him up and putting him down with blockers ahead of him. Culver helping out, and he's wrapped up just shy of BYU's 20-yard line. Isaac Kelly finally bringing Derek Lewis down. Well, and there's that big play speed we were talking about. High school track star. Didn't play football until he was in junior college. 40 yards on that pickup as they pull a little Gary Croton on the Cougars. Yeah, this guy, he can run, he can jump. He was the state record holder in the long jump, long jump 23-6, and you see those long strides as he goes down the field, and BYU's defense was completely fooled as they brought the reverse around that left side. That's what Larry Ned running the football effectively will do. It'll make all of the play action and misdirection work for you. Now they'll go back to Ned, trying the left side. Runs into a bunch of people. 
at the 20, just inside the 20. Ryan Denny, the first one to wrap him up. And Ryan Denny, big physical defensive end. He came down on that last play that went around his side. Right at the top of the Mountain West Conference with six sacks, three forced fumbles. He's playing with a terrible case of what, what they call turf toe. I mean, he, it, it pains him, so they, they give him a little uh, medication before the game on it, and he runs around, but it's uh, very painful. He's been very effective. 12 tackles for loss included in that, those six sacks. Sheriff with great protection throws it right to Madrietta, and here comes BYU on the return. Levi Madrietta playing center field, his third pick of the season, and that was a bad decision, and this is the kind of thing they talked about with Lon Sheriff. Yeah, he was trying to go down the middle of the field to his tight end, and you look at that turnover situation now, in, in one turnover, but really that block pump would, doesn't go down, especially as a turnover, but it really should count as two, and he overthrows the ball badly, was leaning back, and Madrietta was the free safety sitting back playing center field, and that was just a gift, as you mentioned, picking up his third interception of the year. And now Ted Toner talking about where the decision process happened there and why he decided to throw the football in. 16th start of his career. They expected him to be a little smarter in certain situations, and that was one of those plays. And now BYU tries to capitalize. Doman fires it out there. Dustin Reichert comes in. Andrew Ord catches it. And Reichert's uh, coming over to protect his boy. And I'll tell you what, if I'm going to take sides on that one in, in, a, in a fight, I'm going to get behind Dustin Reichert. He's enormous. You think? 6'7", 301. He was working out uh, there. Butler's a tough guy, but a 5'11", 215. Yeah. I don't think I want to get in a scrap with Reichert. Andy Orton, local kid from San Diego area. Nice to be home for him. Don Doman looking to make something happen, and he's wrapped up at about the 20-yard line. And I guarantee you, Jerome Haywood helps up Brandon Doman, but I guarantee you, Haywood was talking to him all the way up. Oh, he, he <laughs> has a constant dialogue going yeah. on on the field and all the time. And it's not mean-spirited. He no, loves to play football. He is just, he's just one of the, the, the funnest guys. You see him, he's relentless. He keeps coming. You saw him miss a 51 back. Now, look at him. Keep coming, keep coming. And then he's back in there to finish up. And right now, oh, yeah. you know he's looking, yeah. he's talking to him right now. Yeah. Under, and Doman's talking back. Yeah, there's a lot of chatter in there. <laughs> and respect from both sides. Key play here, late second quarter. Doman, great protection over the middle has Mahe, who's up across the 35-yard line. Plenty of time for him to find the crossing routes and Reno Mahe helping him out. Mentioned in the open that Mahe would be playing a key role here as the season goes on now that he's healthy. And that time the key was good time for Doman to be able to stand back there and let Mahe work himself free underneath the coverage. You see his number in year, 43 receptions for 491 yards and adding to that total here this evening in San Diego. Staley looking for some running room. Has it. Breaks tackles. He's crossing this midfield. He will not be caught. Staley, his 15th touchdown of the season, continuing to pile up numbers. Another six for number six. Well, and people underestimate defensive players how fast Luke Staley is. He's so strong, and he kind of picks his way as he comes out of the backfield. And then once he gets going north and south, he just explodes. And people take bad angles. You don't think a guy that big can stride out that fast, but he can run away from just about anybody on the football field. One shy of the Cougar single season touchdown mark, Matt Payne rips the extra point, and San Diego State's done a solid job keeping them bottled up, but that's the explosiveness of the Cougars and Luke Staley. BYU roars back to take the lead. There you see Luke Staley tied for second all-time BYU in a single season touchdown category trailing only Wayman Hamilton. We're going to see that Ronnie Jenkins 
as we take a look at the scoring drive, 87 yards and four plays a minute 55. Ronnie Jenkins will be playing in this stadium tomorrow. The former Cougar, big return man, ran one back 105 yards last week for the San Diego Chargers, and he was at the BYU's hotel this afternoon talking to some of the BYU players. And the Cougars tried a little pop-up kick as well. And Aztecs return it just shy of the 25-yard line. And we have a ball game here. Let's look at the R.C. Willie Scholar Athletes for this week. From BYU, Brandon Doman is a senior quarterback from Salt Lake City, Utah. Brandon majoring in business management, 3-1-2 GPA. For San Diego State, Lon Sheriff, junior quarterback from Santee Cal. He's majoring in English with a pre-med emphasis, holds a 3.59 GPA. R.C. Willie congratulates this week's Scholar Athletes and reminds you nobody beats R.C. Willie. And Sheriff had some options about where he went to school. Oh, oh, yeah, he turned down an opportunity to go to Harvard, play football and go to school there, and came to San Diego State. Gives it back to Ned, and once again, Larry Ned up, right up on the cusp of 100 yards here. 19 carries, right around 100 yards. Luke Staley, six carries, 90 yards. There's, there's a look at Luke Staley. Amazing thing about him, 35 career touchdowns. He's played 25 college games. Yeah, he just, for some reason, is a big play guy. And, and he has a lot of long touchdown runs, but, but also whenever BYU gets down inside that 10-yard line, that's who they go to, Luke Staley. San Diego State trying to play keep away again and move the ball down the field. Here comes Ned, and he's wrapped up. Ball walking horse. Rarely do you see a guy be able to pull Ned down from behind with an arm tackle up top. Boy, at that time, he just depleted Larry Ned. We talked about how big Paul Walking Horse is. Just a sophomore, 255-pound linebacker. Stepped up this time and watched Ned as he was trying to go in and make a cut. Just grabbed him from behind. Cleats flew right out from under him forward and made an immediate stop. Look, he looks back like, who was strong enough to do that to me? Ned on pace to approach his record performance of a few weeks back at Colorado State when he carried the ball 40 times. He's right up there, 20 for 99 and a couple of touchdowns. Sheriff over the middle. Looks like it'll be shy of a first down as he hooked up with J.R. Tolver. Brandon Heaney with the quick tackle there. And Tolver was open early, more open early. And that ball should have been delivered right on the break. Ron Sheriff held the football a little too long, and Tolver was covered better at the end of that throw by Brandon Heaney and their extra linebacker, their pass defense linebacker, Colby Buckwell. There's a look at Tolver's numbers, 39 for 551, 14.1 yard average, a couple of TDs. From nearby San Diego, 6'1", 205 pounder. Caught balls in... 22 straight games now. Well, last year, 62 receptions, 808 yards. And it is a first down. So the Aztecs trying to take time off the clock and move down and take the lead. I think Gary Croton's not happy with that spot. It appeared like he went down shy of the 35. But the Aztecs have a first down, under three and a half to go in the first half. And they'll put it back in the arms of their horse. And he's wrapped up again by Paul Walkenhorse. That meeting going Paul's way the last couple times. Well, Larry Nett early in this football game, the first quarter was able to start inside tackle and then bounce it to the outside. BYU's uh, outside backer, Walkner, looks like he's getting used to kind of the flow of the game. And as Ned tries to bounce that to the outside, he keeps that outside hand free. He's able to work his way to Larry Ned for the tackle. Loss of four there. And this is a position the Cougar defense enjoys, putting Lon Sheriff in second and long. There's Ned again up the middle, and he has big yardage. Inside Cougar territory, down the sideline, run out of bounds, right near the 35-yard line, and there's some pushing and shoving near midfield, and flags fly. And another flag comes in. Out near midfield, Ifo Pili getting into it with Brendan Darby. And I, I'm thinking these are gonna be offsetting penalties. 
We have offsetting foul. Dead ball, personal foul. Offense, dead ball, personal foul. Defense, penalties offset. Dead ball, first down. And, and what's going to happen, Larry, now look at him find the hole. He's so good at getting inside and finding that, and then when he's out in the open, he's got great speed. But what's going to happen here is I, I couldn't see the San Diego State player that hit Efo Peely in the back late, and then the flag was thrown immediately. I think it was Darby who hit him in the back late, and the flag was thrown. Play was over. Efo Peely reacts, comes back, and decides he's got to enforce it himself, and hits Darby back in the face a couple of times. Another official comes in and throws the penalty on Peely. The, the smart thing to do is just walk away, and, and it's a 15-yard penalty. Big break for the Cougars. Turns into a bigger break for the Aztecs as the penalties offset Ned up near 130 yards now for the ball game. Sheriff hooks up with Brian Gelt. First time we've called his name, the tight end, the senior from Valencia. Isaac Kelly on the coverage and the tackle. And San Diego State doing a great job of milking clock, moving down the field. And there's another flag. See what that is. That one's deep in the San Diego State backfield. Let's listen. Holding. Offense. Ten yards. Previous spot. First down. There's a killer. Ted Tolner not happy at all about that. Went after a big play. Gelt made a nice catch and went back behind. The ball was thrown behind by Sheriff, and he went back and got it. The former junior college All-American from Glendale Community College. Started at tight end. Started eight games last year. San Diego State hurting themselves tonight with penalties and turnovers. But they're doing a good job of keeping BYU's offense off the field. Time of possession heavily in favor of the Aztecs. The way to go here, though. First and 20. And two minutes to go in the half. Ryan Denny trying to get to him. Until he can't do it. Picked off by Isaac Kelly. Down the sideline. Touchdown, Cougars. spike the football in the end zone the touchdown will count but they'll call they might as so well really they might as well have a big celebration there because it, it's already going to cost them 15 but again a nice play by sheriff bobbled by ned and the cougars a huge opportunistic play and they punch it in my San Diego state continues to just kill themselves that ball was thrown well to the outside but was thrown very hard from point blank range at larry ned Unsportsmanlike conduct, defense, 15 yards on the try. You see, you see the spike right there. Well, the nice former play. quarterback, uh, he's been there before. You, you just can't, you got to know, you can't have any fun in the end zone, guys. Well, you see a chance to see Isaac Kelly run down the field. Now, BYU has had a blocked field goal attempt for a touchdown, and now an interception when San Diego State was driving the football in BYU territory, returned for a touchdown. Very opportunistic. But San Diego State really killing themselves here in the first half. And that was a killer for the Aztecs as Matt Payne lines up what is now a 35-yard extra point. And he has it. So what a tr change of emotion for Ted Tolner. They're moving down, eating clock, field goal range, maybe more, and a crucial penalty, and then a turnover. BYU takes it in for a touchdown, and... Ted Tolner goes in, I mean, near the end of the half. They've, they've dominated this game, but a couple of big plays by the Cougars, special teams and defense. If you look, San Diego State has 224 yards of total offense on 35 plays to BYU's 141 on 22 plays. They're moving the football, running the ball well. Sheriff's look like he's getting some confidence, but big mistakes. Very, very costly for Ted Tolner and the San Diego State Aztecs. A pretty good decision, Sheriff had Ned. Uh, he threw it maybe a little too hard for a short pass. Ned bobbles it up in the air, and, and Kelly right there. Well, it, was, it was in the right spot. He threw it away from the defender to the left side, but he threw it very hard from short range, and Ned just couldn't handle it. So once again, we, we've seen this just last week. Aztec fans know what happened at, at Ohio State. Ted Tolner's leading 12-6. Midway through the third quarter, they are handling the Buckeyes, and all of a sudden, five straight possessions. They turn it over. And all of a sudden, a, a big chance for a huge program-making win turns into another tough loss. And, you know, that man next to him, Lon Sheriff, his confidence at this point, how high can it be? Yeah, and, and you would think that Ted, you see him just shake his head right there. You would think that Ted Tolner would 
would say, hey, that, that has nothing to do with you. You don't even count that interception as your interception because the ball was thrown in the right spot. Another high short kick. Gamble, we've seen some exciting things from him. And runs into BYU's cover team. Kurt Elliott, who made the tackle on Gamble on the kick cover. Throwing up the home run ball. Culver out there. Trying to haul it in. Nice effort. But just a little bit too long on the pass from Sheriff. You see his numbers on the game. 5 of 13, 54 yards. They're getting outside the pocket. His ability to run might make the difference. On second down or third down, you don't want to let the clock expire. Now Gesser just has to score however he can get it done. On a night with 930 yards, it comes to one play. It's lofted for Bush. It's incomplete. Oregon wins. And a fifth unbeaten has fallen on this shakedown Saturday, 2001. <laughs> You know, he's, he forget 200. He's thinking, I may get 300 this game. Well, when you see those holes opening up and you're making big chunks of yardage, it has a tendency to make you forget any uh -huh. pain that you're having. Mm -hmm. Adrenaline gets going, and he's feeling good right now, and you can tell. Sports West is your source for sports on the internet. For the latest information on your local team schedules and upcoming telecasts, go online with Sports West at www.gosportswest.com. Forty-nine seconds to go. Aztecs in business here. You normally, with under two minutes, you think about dinking and dunking down the sidelines, maybe getting out of bounds, throwing the ball. But when you have Larry Ned, you give it to him a couple times, and you're in field goal right, range. And you still have two timeouts. Right. So, so the Aztecs' entire offense is still available to them here with 49 seconds to go. Sheriff has a man open in the flat. This is H-back Ray McNeil, and he's wrapped up Brandon Heaney with a big hit. The whistle blows. Short gain. Clock continues to run, and not much urgency from the Aztecs as it ticks down. Now they step in and call timeout. Well, McNeil is a load. 260-pound senior. San Diego State, second charge timeout. Well, and BYU is playing off the receivers, giving up the underneath here. Heaney is in coverage in zone on the outside. He's going to come up. And at this point, you know, Gray McNeil is down. And if you're Ted Tony, you're going, get down, get down. Save some time on the clock. He took five seconds battling there and never did get out of bounds. The magic number for the Aztecs kicker, Tommy Karofsky, seems to be inside 40. He's six for six. Check that. He's four for four inside the 40 this season. And Ted Toler, no doubt, is talking to Sheriff about, here are your options, but be very careful with the football. If you see this, do not throw it into traffic. Wants to ensure that they get some points out of this and not force a ball in and possibly have an interception. So from the power of positive thinking, he did not say to him, do not turn the ball over. No, he didn't say, don't throw an interception. <laughs> he said, if it looks crowded, throw the ball away. Well, they still have confidence. We you know, we know from talking to Coach Tolner and Dave Lay, the offensive coordinator, he is their guy. They, they know he's a smart quarterback and he's developing. They, they just need consistency. And at that position, it's so difficult. That's the, that's the mark between, that's the difference between the good ones and the great ones. It's, it's doing it every single Saturday. And doing it every single carry is Larry Ned. Plows forward, first down. That'll stop the clock. No need to call time out there. Well, and you need to save your last timeout to be able to get your field goal team on if necessary to kick that field goal. 28 seconds, they still have a couple plays left before they have to think about field goal, and they'd like to get it in for touchdown. He's up at 190 yards now, and they spike it. 23 ticks to go, one timeout, and they are within Tommy Karofsky's field goal range. It's been a solid game 
for the Aztecs, minus the block field goal touchdown and the bobble pick for a touchdown by BYU. I mean, their, their defense is doing a nice job with the Cougar offense, except for, again, the, the one big play by Luke Staley comes to mind there. But, I mean, they 14 points they've scored. They average only 15 a game. Ted Toner's getting it done here. His plan this week is working. That's right. And Sheriff, not completion percentage. You know, he's 6 out of 15 right now in the two interceptions. But what they've done well is run the football. Over the middle. Hooks up with his big H-back McNeil again. Walking horse bringing him down. This looks to be a team trying to set up a field goal. And here they come after the timeout. I guess they figured they want to get something. They didn't want to take a shot at the end zone. Yeah, now they still could. 15 seconds. It's a third down play. You could take a shot at the end zone if you wanted to. However, they're going to like to kick it. If you bobble the snap or something, you still have a fourth down play to come back and kick a field goal. Aggressive thinking would say, take one shot at the end zone right here. And, and then kick your field goal. But when you've got two interceptions down in scoring territory, maybe you say, you know what? Let's kick the field goal. Let's go off the field at halftime, still with a game in reach and something positive to talk about in the locker room by getting points as we go out here. Absolutely. So the field goal team was out there. Now that Ted Toner's had a chance to think about it a little bit, it looks as though he sent that offense back in. He's thought through it. That's right, Lock Sheriff Back in for one more back. play. So he, he was having that same either-or in his mind. His, his first gut was to send a field goal team out there, and now he's decided, you know what, 15 seconds, we got one more play, and let's let's do a safe play that will either be caught in the end zone for a touchdown. Your or, guy or nobody, or right? Inco or incomplete, and we line up and kick a field goal. And if you're going to try to go for it here, you're going to try to get a touchdown. Cougars looking for a sack. Healy with some pressure, and... He took one shot, just as we said. But then we had one blocked in the first quarter that Ryan Denny rumbled back for a touchdown. Timeout. BYU. Second charge timeout. So BYU is one of their two remaining timeouts. You know, you know Ted Tolner uh, came here with high hopes and did a nice job first few seasons, has run into some frustration. This summer, he was offered the offensive coordinator spot. And they're lining up for the field goal and another timeout. Timeout, BYU, 30-second timeout. 30-second timeout. And at this point, Carrots, I think... 30 seconds. It'd be helpful if Claire would turn his mic off, but maybe we'll hear <laughs> something interesting. Yeah, we'd get right down there and feel to hear the timeouts, but... But he was pretty adamant that this was a 30-second yeah, right. timeout, I'd say. <laughs> he wants everybody in the stadium to know that this is 30 seconds and we're getting Are they icing time. Karofsky here? Is that you, you ice him at the end. Of, you know what? You have two timeouts. They don't carry over, so why not use him? Gary Croton going to make him just a little more tight. Yep. And uh, you know, whether that works or not remains to be seen. But a good, a good Karofsky from about 32. And that had no chance from the beginning. Whether he was iced or not, Tommy Karowski having some problems that he hasn't experienced this season. That was another tough blow emotionally for the Aztecs. Right, because you come down expecting to at least get three, and now you walk off without those three points. The game's still very much in reach for Ted Tolan. Everything that ha could go wrong has gone wrong for them in the first half, and the game is still in reach. It'll be interesting to see what Gary Croton does here. We've seen him with less than 15 seconds in a game go or in a half go for a big play and try to try to get something. Well, let's see if he'll be content to just run the football here or if he'll actually go for a play here with eight seconds left. He, he doesn't know the play called taking a knee. I, I'm not sure he but knows what he, that he's is. He's in a shotgun, four wide receivers, <laughs> and a single back next to Brandon Dome. Looking to make something happen against a three-man rush. All kinds of time. He's directing traffic. And now he'll run out of bounds, and there's the half. So BYU outplayed with a couple of key plays, three big plays for BYU, and Ted Tolner has to feel good about what they've done except for those three big plays, and he runs into the locker room down 10 points. This Sports West College football presentation is brought to you by OmniServe Wireless. Your phone, your service, your lifestyle. Hey, hook me up. Alamo. Drive happy with Alamo Rent-A-Car at 1-800-GO-ALAMO, or click on alamo.com 
cricket community. Here around now, he's got his chart. They've worked all week on short yardage plays. Frank Spaziani on the other side knows what he thinks he's going to call. So he's working on his calls. It's going to come down to this with 4.06 left. This is the eighth play of the drive. Howard in motion. They give it to Jones. What a hit by Churchill. Vinnie Churchill, the junior out of Paramus, New Jersey, smelled it out, and now it's a fourth down, and they got more than one to pick up. Yeah, now you probably are looking at the option here. Right, Churchill did a nice job of running through behind the offensive lineman, Mayhem, Sean Mayhem, number 79. You see him pull, and Churchill runs right behind him. So here's the four for Joe Paterno, an emotional moment with his wife Sue and Paterno. This, one of his finest coaching jobs, I think you have to say, because so many people, after that 0-4 start, talked about their talent, and they were probably right. Penn State's not as talented as they have been. The Turnos turned this team around. They won two in a row. 29-27 over Ohio State, and Mills was huge. Over 400 yards of total offense. You look at the resume, it speaks for itself, as does his coaching job this year. And a resume for the ages. And believe it or not, I helped contribute to two of those victories at the University of Pittsburgh. But that's just an <laughs> outstanding job by Joe Paterno. Hats off to Coach Paterno. He deserved it. He passes Paul Bear Bryant. Stands alone atop the 1A victory list with 324. And he'll try to add to it, maybe even get a chance at another bowl victory before it's over. Certainly Oklahoma and Nebraska have no such worries about becoming bowl eligible. They, for the second year in a row, won two in the BCS standing as they met in Lincoln. No sooner coach had won in Lincoln since Barry Switzer. Bob Stoops unbeaten against top 10 teams, 8-0. His teams have won 20 in a row, first possession of the game. Jason White picked by Keo Craver. Nebraska did not turn this into points. The second quarter, White, on a second and 10 play, trying to make a play. Quentin Griffin here will catch the ball for the first down, but White hurts himself. He lands awkwardly on his left leg and twinges his knee, and he goes off the field with ice on his leg. Came back briefly, but at the moment, Nate Hibble was in there, looked for his tight end, Trent Smith, and found him. Sooners on top, 7-0. Now, Eric Krause, we talked all week about his need to throw the ball effectively. He was 4-4 four for four on this drive after Nebraska went three and out in their first six or four of their first six drives and had to punt on all of them. It opened up the running game, and Darren Diedrich scoring from the three and we're tied at seven. This is a key play. Oklahoma trickeration, and it's set up beautifully. Hibble's wide open. Wide open. If the pass is there, he slips on the play. It's going to be a big play. But if you want to run the reverse pass the right way, take a look at this. Nebraska sets it up. This is how you run it. Eric Crouch down the sidelines. It's a foot race, 63 yards in for the touchdown. Young Mike Stunts throwing the ball, and Nebraska beating... I want to have substance in, at every position. And I think with Travis and Mark and Daniel and Sean and some of these types of players who You're not only have the ability to the play within a system, six, six, but also have the ability to create shots on their own, is something you need to win at the highest level. Working in at point guard with Matt Montague will be freshman Sean Obanui, the entertainer. Sean has serious ball handling skills, but also knows how to get the ball to the open man. On the, on the floor, Coach Cleveland likes it real solid. Nice, solid point guard. Uh, and we have great wings this year with Big Low, Travis Hansen. This Sports West College football presentation is brought to you by OmniServe Wireless. Your phone, your service, your lifestyle. Hey, hook me up. Alamo. Drive happy with Alamo. Rent a car at 1-800-GO-ALAMO or click on alamo.com. Cricket Communications, comfortable wireless, and Nokia mobile phones. Nokia, connecting people. And by Delta Airlines, who asks, how do you want to fly? Speaking of fly, let's take a look at BYU's air mail deliverer, Brandon Doman, as we take a look at the quarterback comparison. And, and Blaine, what jumps out at me is, you know, both quarterbacks moving along, Sheriff struggling a little bit, but BYU averages, Doman averages 30 passes a game. He's only thrown 10. Yeah, well, one of the reasons for that, he has seven rushes for minus 17 yards. That means he's been caught trying to throw the football. Most of those were drop back passes. Great coverage downfield. The two interception for Sheriff, a, a big problem and turned into points for BYU. But Doman probably would have thrown 15 to 16 passes in the first half, but good coverage by San Diego State dictated he tucked it under and take off with it. 
Cougars getting ready to receive the kickoff. Brian Simkanowski puts the big leg into it and rips it. Out comes Paul Peterson, who falls down. And about the 15-yard line, short return, and that's where Brandon Doman will get into business. And I always wonder who they're going to give credit for that tackle to. Because <laughs> he's out in the middle of open space and just gets down on Mr. his own. There we are. There, Luke Stell, we mentioned the 15-yard average in the first half for Luke Stell. And look at the work that Larry Knight has gotten. 25 rushes and a half for a single player. That's unbelievable. 190 well, yards. And, and also, you know, normally you used to say 25 carries and a half. You think he's all battered and beaten up. Well, the Cougars haven't really put many hats on him. He's no. had a lot of runs for freedom in the secondary. Walkenhorst had one good solid hit on Ned in the first half. Other than that, he's had a lot of holes to run through in that first half. Here's Larry Ned. I don't think that ankle's bothering him. Not at all. Not when he looks up and seeing he has a chance to go for 300 or maybe more yards tonight. Looks pretty good there. And the quick feet of Larry Ned. In time, BYU from their own 14. Go empty backfield. Doman, plenty of time. Great protection. Mahe already down on the knee as he hauls it in. Short gain. The pass is complete. You right. mentioned as we went into halftime that... This is often where Gary Croton does some of his best work. Yeah, he, he is notorious, has a tremendous reputation, both in the National Football League and in his previous coordinating experiences in college, that, that he will go in and design a game plan for the second half that takes advantage of everything that defense gave him in the first half. Um, and BYU's been very explosive in second half of football games this year. And no Luke Staley, empty backfield. Low snap, he gobbles it up. Again, throws out to Mahe. Looks like first down yardage if they give him the catch, and no catch. So that'll set up a third and short. When the umpire comes back from the inside and, and uh, makes the call, he had better view on that play. He could actually see it from the front side and came in and overruled the call, and that's how these officials are supposed to work. That's a good job. For the inside guy that had the better view, now take a look. Does he get his hands underneath it? That ball actually hit the ground. That was a good call. Empty backfield again. Third and four. Plenty of time on the play clock. And that's going to be a false start up front. And they'll back it up. It'll turn into a third and nine. Right, big Ben Archibald. Brandon Doman took a long time. Dead ball. False start. Offense. Five yards. Third down. Brandon Doman took a long time as he was checking the defensive secondary and giving some hand signals to his outside guys. And that was just too long for Ben Archibald to sit still and stand on that outside. And, and BYU was going with a tight end, four wide receivers, and no backs in the backfield. Now Luke Staley, after the penalty on third and nine, comes back into the football game and stand next to Brandon Doman in that backfield. Big spot here for the Aztecs. And they try Staley, plenty of running room, and he's wrapped up right at the bottom of that pile. You'll find the redshirt freshman again, Kirk Morrison, got a hold of Staley's ankles and didn't let go. When Staley patiently staying in behind his blocker, trying to find a seam to be able to explode to, but that seam never came. He got in behind Riker, you see him with his hand on his hip, and then it was closed down, and we've called that name a lot in the first half. Kirk Morrison having a good football game for San Diego State defensively. Aaron Edmonds getting ready to kick the ball to Dante Gamble, who has shown us some flashes of brilliance. Amazing quickness, 5'8", 160 from Compton by way of El Camino Junior College. Fifth in the Mountain West Conference in kickoff returns. He's up there in punt returns, and here he goes. Plenty of running room. Keeps on going. And he's down inside the 45-yard line. This is a great situation for Lon Sheriff to come out and start off the second half for the Aztecs. A great field position. Very poor outside coverage that time for BYU on the punt. They allowed to be allowed to, uh, a good return on the outside and the right side. Just a 38-yard punt. Had good hang time, but nobody on that outside coverage for BYU. See what Ken Schmidt and the Cougar defensive coaches can come up with as a way to try to collar Larry Ned. He's just run wild. 
again, 25 carries, 190, and two touchdowns. That's that's a pretty good couple of games for most oh, people. Yeah. And they go right back to Ned again up the middle before Justin Ennis stops him. Gain of about eight or nine. Well, watch the hole as you're looking at it from Larry Ned's view. Look at the collapse on that offensive line. They collapse down the inside people for BYU. So Gunderson get washed down the line of scrimmage. And that's so good. They get him the ball deep in the backfield, and he can pick any hole he wants along the line of scrimmage. So you're sliding down trying to pursue him. He cuts right back in behind you. Great vision by Larry Ned. Second and two. Great spot for Sheriff. A lot of options here. BYU bringing people. Ball's tipped up in the air. And the way things had gone for the Aztecs tonight, that could have turned into a Cougar interception. Boy, and they're running the football so well. It was second and short, and Ted Tolner feeling like, hey, I can come back on third down and get a first down. Let's take a shot at something here and throw the football up the field, but that one gets batted down right in the line of scrimmage. BYU bringing a backer blitz, Justin Anna up the middle, and boy, that pocket collapses quickly. Typically, the Cougars do not blitz very much under Ken Schmidt. Is there a run blitz scenario coming up here? Or well, Ifo, Ifo Pili, you see there, is the guy to get his hand on the ball. And they bring linebackers. You just don't see wholesale blitzes out of BYU. They bring people out of secondary lineup and bring eight people. That's not their style. BYU wraps up Ned right there, right near the first down marker. Ryan Denny, a big part of that stop. Ryan Denny. Boy, and if, if it's fourth down, here comes a... A decision for Ted. I think you're in that no man's land where you've got to go for it on fourth down. You're, it'd be a 50-yard field goal, but you don't really want to punt from there. So this is a no lose. You go for it on fourth down in this situation. Yeah, no question. Especially when you have a battering ram like Larry Ned. Fourth down. They're four out of ten on the year in fourth downs. So 40 percent. And they're going to try Ned again. He's wrapped up. Paul Walkenhorst coming in and bringing Ned down. Big play for the Cougar defense. And a big play for the Aztecs as well. That was a little bit devastating for them. They did a good job of taking over early in the second half. And Walkenhorst has had a very fine football game for BYU defensively. He's made several tackles at the last scrimmage. He just beat Brian Gelt, who was trying to block him, the tight end. Unable to keep Walkenhorst out of there, and here comes BYU. Bowman pitching to Staley, looking for some room, has some room, has the corner. Has about 15, maybe 20. He's faster than linebackers, and he doesn't mind taking on the cornerbacks. Oh, he's so strong. He, he, it's just amazing. You watch him, and he doesn't look like he's working that hard. Yet he's just blowing by people as he comes out of the backfield. Good job. You see the just pancake Big block, block that there. time. Looked like Sukanik pancaked somebody. Jason Sukanik, the center out there. Against that, the, the even front, he's uncovered the center to snap the football and get out in front. That's a great job by a center. And he got out there in front of Luke Staley and made a great block. Here comes Staley left with some room. More great blocking. He uses them well. Down the sideline, another 9 or 10. Right on his average, Will Demps. Interesting, we haven't called Will Demps' name very much tonight. The former walk-on senior strong safety making his 19th straight start. There's Will. Boy, what a player he is. He just, you talk, we talked about Haywood loving this game. Will Demps is right there, too. At Demps' first team all-conference last year. A former walk-on. He loves to play the game. He had 97 tackles last year. He leads this team this year with 69. And seven tackles for loss, so he comes up and gets after it. Cougars going to the run. There's Staley again, running for another pickup of about five or six. Garrett Pavelko, the free safety, making that play. We're working in behind Dustin Reichert. Big offensive tackle for BYU. Just a junior. He's out of Oregon. 6'7", 301 pounds. Actually, out of Roseville, California. He was honorable mention all Mountain West Conference last year. And uh, he was on the mid-season All-American team. CNN had him on that at mid-season. He is a big physical presence on that offensive no line. No question. They're running right behind him. And Gary Croton says, let's Luke him. Staley, three carries, 34 yards on this drive. It's all Luke Staley. And Bowman pumping, looking down deep. 
Holiday touchdown. Soren Halliday ran right by Marviel Underwood. The first touchdown of the season for Soren Halliday. That one going 32 yards, Blaine. Well, BYU's going to come out. They've been throwing this quick little swing screen to Mahi. See him fake it out to the outside. The outside receivers fake like they're going to block and then go deep. And that's not bad coverage. That's just a perfect throw and good concentration. Underwood was in good position, and Doman put it just out of his reach and in perfect position for Holiday to make that catch. And Matt Payne tacks on the extra point. And long ago, San Diego State was in charge and leading. Let's we'll check the flag down inside the five. Offside, defense, penalties decline, point is successful. Now we'll step aside now. Gary Croton likes how things are going. He put the ball in the hands of Staley for most of that drive. Cougars up 17. OmniServe Wireless. Your phone, your plan, your lifestyle. Just say, Hook me up. OmniServe Wireless covers the West. Call 888-378-OMNI for the location nearest you. OmniServe Wireless for the latest in phones, accessories, and rate plans. There's an OmniServe Wireless store near you. Just say, Hook me up. Hook me up, hook me up. OmniServe, hook me up. All right, I'm going to say something to make you smile. Cozy furniture. Okay, let's try something else. Big screen TV, stereo, DVD player. All right, uh, one more, one more. Um, appliances. Okay, let's let's try something a little more simple. RC Willie. Largest selection, lowest prices, in-store credit. RC Willie has something to make everyone smile because nobody beats RC Willie. I know you. Successful, active, very hands-on. Do you know me? Smart, slim, good with numbers. That's right, Panasonic is into cell phones. In a big way, in a tiny way. 2.7 ounces. Feature rich. Speaker phone. Voice dialing. Get the message? Who's calling? Panasonic. See the scoring drive capped off by the Brandon Doman Soren Halliday hookup. There's Mike Borich, the Cougars offensive coordinator. He came over with Gary Croton from the Chicago Bears. He was the wide receivers coach for the Bears. And those two together break down tape, and they are in lockstep when it comes to calling plays. A great relationship there offensively for the Cougars. And that one kicked out of bounds will come out to the 35. Croton calls the plays. Right. But Mike Borich makes all kinds of suggestions. He's up there in the booth that says, they're, they're giving you this, or this Free is open, or here is the coverage. Scheme, scheme. By rule, the ball's placed at the 35-yard line. First step. And they, and they have a great working relationship. They've been together a long time. They know exactly what to expect from one another, and it's a very good play-calling scheme. I asked Mike Boritz last night. We were sitting and talking with the two coaches, and I said, when you have something you really like, what do you do? You just tell them, do this? And he laughed. He said, I don't do that. That doesn't work. He said, you catch more flies with honey. So I just say, you know, this might work, and then the next play he'll say, this might work, and finally he'll wear him down before Coach Croton says, all right, let's try this. Mike Borch, I've had uh, several conversations with him as we've covered a few of their games this year. Very, very bright offensive line. Tough spot for Lon Sheriff and company. We talked about how difficult it is for a running team to get back in it when they're behind, but when you have Larry Ned, there's always the chance you can grind it out. That, that's going to be his 29th carry and take him well over 200 yards now. And uh, if you can get that much, that's as good as a throw. If you can get and watch the hole this creates. You're watching from behind. Look at this hole. Big lead block. What they do is they put their age back and <laughs> little hole there on Justin. Anna. But the initial contact was great. And they'll put in their H back as the up back. A 260 pounder in McNeil and let him lead up for Larry Ned as he did on that play. Ned over. 200 to 211, and there's a little flip pass to the big tight end. That's Brian Gelt, 6'3", 240 from Valencia, the senior, hauling it in and lumbering down the sideline. Well, a good call that time.
by the Aztecs. They've been running the football so effectively. Now you come back, you play action. Look at the defense reaction. Everybody jumps on Larry Ned, hoping to take away those cutback lanes, and you just dump it out to your tight end. A big game. Great play call. Ned already ran for 285 yards earlier this season against Eastern Illinois. It's the best running performance in the nation, and he's creeping up on that steadily. San Diego State needs to get some points here early in the third quarter because you get the feeling BYU's in rhythm now. Sheriff looking. Throws the out route. Great grab there. What a catch for Derek Lewis. We talked about his athletic ability. What a what a haul in there, Blaine. Well, and Derek Lewis was open. He had a lot of cushion from Gennaro Guilford respecting Derek Lewis's upfield speed. See him out on the outside on the top of your screen. He's going to come like he's going on a streak, and he breaks back to the outside. If that ball is thrown a little more accurately back inside, Lewis will be able to catch that, and then it would be one-on-one, -on -one, him against Guilford, trying to get into the end zone. But he had to come back so far and leave his feet to catch the football. Young Cougar fans having a good time here. Sheriff back to pass. Hums it out there. Right in the hands of J.R. Tolver. And you may not see him drop another ball like that the rest of the season. Normally very sure-handed. Well, coverage tighter that time by Guilford. Similar route on an outside breaking route, and that ball was thrown well. That was a better throw than the play before, and Tolliver not be able to come up with the football. Third and three. At this point, you get the feeling like San Diego State field goals really won't, won't get it done. Plenty of time left. They, they want to get a touchdown here. into Justin Anna, well short of the first down. That's a decision time for Ted Tolner, or is it, Blaine? I think you go for it here on fourth down. You got fourth and about two, and, and you're talking about a 45-yard field goal, 44, 45-yard field goal, and you're down 31 to 14. This is time to go for it. Look at the filling here, Blaine. Yeah, you've watched these holes open up. This time they're going to come off to the right and watch. The hole's there for a second, and then look at Walkenhorst come down and close that hole down quickly on Larry Ned. Ryan Gunderson getting his nose dirty as well. Fourth and three, and sure enough, they're going for it. Sheriff over the middle has his man. That's McNeil. He's going to score. Six yards on a fourth and three, and San Diego State refuses to go away. What a huge play for the Aztecs here. Well, at BYU, we talked about the fact that they don't blitz very often. This time they bring the linebackers, thinking that they got to stop Larry Ned on fourth and two from running the football. And then you've got one on one matchups. They bring the tight end back underneath. Their H back back underneath out of the backfield, wide open for the touchdown. Back on the extra point. And it's a 10-point game, 31-21. Aztecs punch one in when they really needed it. Wireless service is like sports. It's fun. It's business. It's keeping in touch. Get in the game with AT&T Wireless. Sign up before November 3rd for $39.99 AT&T Wireless Digital Advantage Plan and get up to 3,400 minutes a month for life. Sign up for a two-year contract and get up to an additional $135 in savings and a free Ericsson phone. We support the game on and off the field. Visit your local AT&T Wireless Authorized Dealer. Say goodbye to your fork and hello to McDonald's new Sausage McGriddle Sandwich. The revolutionary new way to eat pancakes and sausage. Two griddle cakes, a sausage patty, and the taste of maple syrup in every bite. The new Sausage McGriddle Sandwich, only at McDonald's. How's that fork situation? Copy. We're going to need backup. Leading the way, Ford's leading the way. Your Ford stores want to drive America with absolutely no interest loans on Ford cars, trucks, and SUVs. For the first time ever, pay no interest. Football right up until kickoff. A little football amongst friends. Sunday NFL Countdown. Sunday mornings at 11 Eastern, only on ESPN. Joe Paterno has passed many coaches.
See the scoring drive, 65 yards, six plays. Gray McNeil romping in with the touchdown. Aztecs answering and pulling to within 10 points. Take advantage of the largest nationwide network with Verizon Wireless. Save on local, regional, and national calling plans designed to meet your needs. Visit a Verizon Wireless communications store today or call 1-800-2-JOIN-IN. Lon Sheriff going over some coverage issues there. They, they exploited the BYU blitz last time. That play uh, put them right back in the middle of this game. But we talked about the reason for going for it on fourth and three. You know, maybe normally you take the, the field goal and pull within two touchdowns, but with the way the Cougars score, you, you just can't let them get too loose. Meantime, there's Spencer Need playing return man up to the 30. Let's take a look at the touchdown again, Blaine. Yeah, McNeil is right there on your screen, right on the very far right side. What he's going to do, he's going to pretend like he's blocking up. Then BYU is going to lose track of Dustin Staley, drops back to help out on the other receivers. Then he releases late into the middle of the field. And Sheriff did a good job of holding on to the ball in the face of a big rush and then delivering it for the touchdown. Doman back in business at his 30. Brandon, 10 of 13 for 115 yards and a touchdown. Plenty of time again. Throws it out there. Soren Halliday, big pickup, first down yardage. But we see BYU here to start the second half. We talked about Crowden making adjustments. Now they come out, and they've been in a lot of spread formations. Five wide receivers, four wide receivers and a tight end with no backs, and then four wides and a single back. So Crowden obviously saw something in the first half where he felt like they needed to spread the San Diego State defense out just a little bit. Dolman heating up. Of course, he's been hot all year. As Staley locked up on a linebacker. Brought down there by Dylan Robles on the coverage. They like Staley locked up with any linebacker in coverage. Oh, yeah, because he's going to get you that four or five as he catches the football, but he's got a great chance of breaking a tackler, running away from somebody, and he can go all the way. Four-yard game officially. For San Diego State, they had great pressure on the quarterback in the first half, and Doman not able to find receivers open downfield. See if they start to bring some people and try to get more pressure on him here. Looks like there's some people coming here. And they roll out. Doman with plenty of room. Throws it out to Reno Mahe. First down yardage up near the 45-yard line of San Diego State. And what BYU does here, they anticipate the blitz of San Diego State. As you're starting to get passes and get in a rhythm, you expect that that defense is going to come down. Mahi's going to come out, going to go on and out. They're going to clear out on the outside with Ord and then go on the out and watch the catch as he goes down for the football and cradles it in. They move Doman out to his right, ran him away from the blitz on a quick roll to the right. Try Staley again, has a hole, slips through, running room. Bounces off some people inside the 40. Garrett Pavelko making the stop from his free safety position. Staley now up and over 100 yards. That's his 11th rush, and that should take him over 130 for the game. He's still averaging about 12 yards a carry. Came in averaging nine yards a carry. Matter of fact, BYU averages seven yards, 7.2 yards every time they snap the ball this season, which speaks to how well they've moved the football all year. In this game, they're averaging 7.6. San Diego State's averaging 6.9. And early on in that first quarter, BYU was averaging 1.9. So they've come a long way since that first quarter. The Fumblerowski play here. Five pops outside, wrapped up, and boy, that quick, physical San Diego State defense sniffed it out. Well, boy, and again, Kirk Morrison. Jeff showed in there, too. Yeah, the redshirt freshman. He's a, he's a running back and linebacker in high school. He had 98 tackles. In high, that's a ton of tackles. And he, he handed in the ball through his legs. <laughs> they have a, a, a few wrinkles that get in this office. Mahi sits on the line of scrimmage after he goes in motion. Doman goes behind him, hands the ball back underneath, and San Diego State didn't have anything to do with it. They had it covered very well. Pretty close to the fumble, Ruski. Third and two. Doman gets out of the pocket. Plenty of room, has a first down. 
and is knocked down inside the 35. Pavelko again making the play. I asked Gary Croton at the end of our meeting last night, you know, they've run so many plays deep in his bag of tricks. I said, how about the fumble Ruski? I was kidding. He said, no, no, no. <laughs> we almost saw it. What do you call that? It wasn't fumble Ruski, but it was, it was close. <laughs> Well, yeah, we talked about Jerome Haywood for San Diego State. You see him on that play. He yep. runs from sideline to sideline. And then he's got, he's happy, he's over there and he's talking and smiling with Brandon Doman. The guy just loves playing football. I like watching Jerome Haywood play football. He goes Staley up the middle, wrapped up by that man, Jerome Haywood. Interesting about Haywood, I ran into Dustin Reichert at the hotel last night and and he just was saying how, how much fun it is to play against Haywood. Not that it's fun, because the guy's a great player, great leverage at 5'9", 280. And he's been on all the Mountain West Conference teams for most of his career. And, uh, but Reichert said, he's talking nonstop. I mean, he, and, but he's got a smile, but he's always said, 7'9", I'm coming after you. Well, 42 <laughs> consecutive starts. Amazing. For Jerome Haywood, two-time second team all Mountain West Conference former. He started as a true freshman here at San Diego State. Going with some room, throws it out. He has his man there inside the 20. That's Justin Anderson who takes quite a shot from Will Demps. Justin in a, a, a BY, has a BYU lineage. His older brother started a wide receiver a few years back for BYU, a speedster. Anderson makes a good catch but takes a big hit that time from Will Demps. We talked about how physical Will Demps can be coming from the inside and look at the hit that he puts on Anderson on the outside. I think Justin knew what was coming. He just he ducked down. He like tried. He and there's another false start. Looks like they'll get Ben Archibald again on the far right side. Actually, I think there was a tight end on that side that Spencer time. Spencer Need, maybe. Yes, I think Spencer Need. Get a little anxious. You see that defense start to get edgy and come up on the perimeter, and you know you've got to get out there. Full start, offense, five yards, first down. You know you've got to get out there and block that end, and so you start to lean outside. And it's all the way on this, on this right side that you're going to see it. You start to anticipate, he's starting to anticipate the blitz. He's going to go out, and he has to get a guy out to the outside. And need moves and doesn't reset. Makes it first and 15. Cougars trying to answer Lon Sheriff's touchdown pass to Gray McNeil, which brought the Aztecs right back into the middle of this thing. No problem hearing his checkoffs here. And look at Dolman fake the pitch and gets rock fumbles, and there's Luke Staley. He takes it inside the five, and it's just that kind of a night for both teams. I didn't know that that's how you pitch the ball on option. Bounce it off the turf. A big hit on Doman, and there's Luke Staley. But what, what happened was Doman called an audible to an option, and he steps back, and first of all, he couldn't get the snap. So he comes out late, fakes the pitch to the outside, and then just gets oh. smacked by Demps. And we've seen Demps deliver some blows, but the ball pops out and bounces right up to the trail back. Luke Staley as if he meant to pitch it out there, and Staley takes it down to the three-yard line. What more can go wrong for San Diego State? Probably. Pitch wide. Staley has running room. Runs right through people. Touchdown, Cougars. And Luke Staley just tied the Cougars' single-season touchdown record of 16, and he has plenty of games left this season. After tonight, they'll have five more, maybe a, well, probably a bowl game, too. Well, and his determination down close, you know, he, he gets down there inside the five, and somebody grabs a hold of him. He will not be denied getting into the end zone. He's so strong and will battle and get in almost every time. And Payne adds the extra point. It is good. We are seeing a show put on by the top two running backs in the Mountain West Conference. Larry Ned running wild, and Luke Staley has answers of his own as BYU tacks on another touchdown, extending their lead back up to 17 points. Late third, Cougars back in charge.
Other airline credit cards give you one mile for every dollar you spend. But only the Delta Sky Miles credit card from American Express gives you that. Plus, you'll always get double miles at supermarkets, drugstores, and on Delta tickets. On top of 5,000 bonus miles just for getting the card. Watch how quickly all those extra miles add up to your free vacation travel. We can't say the Delta Sky Miles credit card is twice as good as other airline credit cards, but you might. Call 1-800-SKY-MILES to apply now. Every day, Verizon Wireless connects more people in more places than any other wireless company. All on the country's largest wireless network. So you'll know that virtually anywhere you go, from the big cities to the small towns, your call goes through. Verizon Wireless. Join in. Now, get the family share plan and share an extra 3,000 night and weekend minutes a month. Gary Croton with a answer to the Lawn Sheriff to Gray McNeil. Touchdown pass. Cougars back up 17. Aaron Edmonds will now kick it off. We get a chance to see the exciting Dante Gamble go to work. Twenty-two. Telling us all he's number twenty-two. <laughs> he's gonna break one one of these days. Really exciting, great speed. Bounces off some people. He's made some people miss. Let's see what he can do here for the Aztecs. Edmonds pins him into the corner a little bit. Out he comes. Flag comes flying in. <laughs> We saw several flags nice flying shot. right about the 20-yard line on the return. Kurt Elliott coming in to make the play, a uh, shoestring tackle. That's a nice ball. This is going to pin San Diego State back a little deeper, I think. That's not what they needed here to answer the Cougars' touchdown. Let's take a look at the scoring sequence here. <laughs> Great fake, and then the ball bounces BYU's way as it has all night. Well, I mean, everything goes wrong for BYU. Holding. I mean, for say, say the play. B bad snap on the Stay play. Out. Doman juggles it, comes down the line of scrimmage, isn't in a position to pitch it, and then let's take a look at the touchdown after after Luke Staley picks up the fumble and gets it down inside the five. Watch Staley. He just he just will run through any tackles. And next touchdown for Luke Staley will set a new Cougar record for touchdowns in a season. And I mean, he has plenty of time left. After he still has the whole fourth quarter, plus five more games, plus a probably bowl game. Yeah, or he will shatter that record. And before he leaves, and he's only he, four shy of the career yeah, touchdown. He'll break now. the career record this year as well. Sheriff with a little bit of pressure throws it over the middle. Pretty good coverage. If it's not interference and no flags, Isaac Kelly all over J.R. Tolliver. Well, and that's good coverage for a linebacker working on a wide receiver. Isaac Kelly in zone underneath the receiver, picked him up and played man in his zone. And Tolver not able to come up with it. Take a look. Tolver could be breaking from the left side back inside. And look at the hit the sheriff takes low. And, and Tolver gets his hands on the football, but Isaac Kelly does a great job of stripping it away with the right hand and knocking the football away from Tolver. If they find Larry Nett again, there he comes, rumbling up over the 10. There's Ifo Peely at the bottom with both big arms wrapped around Larry Nett's legs. 6'3", 315-pound sophomore from Orem. We asked Coach Croton about the, you know, the fact that we talked about the fact that BYU has been susceptible to the rush this season. He said, well, look at our two inside guys. Feely just got back from a two-year church mission, so that takes a while to reestablish yourself. Jeff Cowart was a tight end. Now he's starting at defensive tackle, and, and they are a little prone there. Young and inexperienced, and, and that's where San Diego State's been attacking. A little bit of pressure. Kiesel comes off trying to find Ned. Misses him, and there's a a couple of Cougars bounce off before Levi Madrieta and Gennaro Guilford bring Ned down with a little bit of additional help. And here we go. BYU forces a punt. Well, and Larry Ned right now, 31 rushes for 216 yards. Just Brian Simjanowski came in leading the conference in punting at 44-6, uh, and he has two kicks tonight, 50 and 53. And as you mentioned, not at altitude, which is amazing. Well, when he's hit them today, they've been perfectly tight spirals and great hang time. 
Eagles figures to be an opportunity for Mike Regal to make something happen returning. And Simbanowski pummels it. Here comes Regal. Can't shake off anybody. Solid wrap up by Thomas Howard on the punt coverage. Blaine, let's take a look at how things are shaking down in the Mountain West. You see BYU, Utah, a tough battle with Colorado State. Went right down to the end. Colorado State scored a touchdown late. Utah unable to answer. So there's BYU 3-0. and And now BYU gets Colorado State Thursday night, and Utah has to go to UNLV. And, and you know what's interesting about the conference this year? Colorado State was picked to win the conference. They start out very slow, but now you look, they're right in the middle they're of right the there. conference race. And uh, Sonny Lubick always does a good job in late October, early November with his football teams. Staley looking for some room. This time, wrapped up. A lot of people involved, including Kirk Morrison again. Well, you know, the other thing about the conference this year, you know, we, we've covered a lot of teams this year, UNLV and Colorado State. We've had Wyoming and San Diego State, BYU. When you think of Mountain West Conference, you think of wide open, crazy offensive football, and you think of the old whack that these teams belong to, there's some great defensive football teams yeah. in this conference and some teams that want to run the football. San Diego State, UNLV, Utah, Colorado State, all very good defensive football teams. Big numbers there. You mentioned defenses. We saw two of them today in Fort Collins. The Utes and the Rams. Dolan, plenty of time. Continues to have plenty of time, and now he tucks it and picks up a few. Stepping out of bounds. Good protection that time. Looking upfield. Very solid coverage in the secondary for San Diego State. Doman trying to direct traffic, get people to move different places, but every place they went, there was a black shirt attached, so he had to tuck it and get out of bounds. Third quarter winding down. Third and six for the Cougars. Coming in, leading the conference. 43.5% conversion. They're kind of around that number now, although they started out slow. catch him on the run. Well, Mahe adjusted. The receivers work very hard for BYU when Doman gets flushed out of the pocket and they practice this in practice. They know where to go. Who's supposed to be where? Mahe adjusted his route and was wide open, but Doman let the ball fly to the outside. At the conclusion of the game, watch for the AT&T Most Valuable Player, presented by AT&T Wireless Services. Wireless from AT&T. Your world, close at hand. Aaron Edmonds back. And again, Appears to be Dante Gamble, punt return specialist for the Aztecs. Edmonds gets away a much better kick. Pinning Gamble into the corner, and he drives him out of bounds at the 12-yard line. What a kick from Edmonds. And Gamble laughing about it because he, he was looking to try to get some business yeah, taken and, care of. And that was an excellent punt because either Gamble fields it and goes out of bounds or the ball goes out of bounds on its own about a yard further. So just a perfect kick by Edmonds that time. You see him getting the, the due credit that, <laughs> that he deserves there on the sideline. 46-yard kick, obviously zero on the return. And again, uh, he's, he's thanking his mom, Debbie, taught him how to punt. It's not that she's ever gone back and kicked herself, but she knows technique. Sheriff going for the home run ball. Way over the head of Derek Lewis. Actually, that's not Derek Lewis. That's the... That's Mr. Webb, who's an interesting story himself. Jeffrey Webb, the freshman. His uncle Michael Duran was a linebacker here at San Diego State. Just a few years back, and now the strength and conditioning coach for San Diego State. He's hung around the Aztec practice field for years. I mean, he's known Coach Tolner for a long time. He's good friends with Az Hakim, the Rams' great third wide receiver. Well, they say that he is the best freshman receiver they've had in this program since Hakim. He's just not as football knowledgeable as Hakim. Hakim just had a great sense of where to go on the football field right from the time he walked on campus. But as, as Webb learns the system here and gets more football smart, he's going to be a tremendous wide receiver. And boy, San Diego State, 
has a great legacy of receivers. Oh, no gone question. from here to the National Football League. Fake reverse, run up the middle, ends the quarter for Ted Tolner and company. Down 17 as the fourth quarter starts. Looking for some push here late. I just moved into my apartment, but I got the basics covered. Food, electricity. Cable. You know it. But no home phone. Know why? Because nobody wants to talk to you? No, smart guy. Because Cricket's the only phone I need. It's just one low monthly price for all my local calls. So with Cricket, I don't need anything else. Except furniture. Stay in touch where you live, work, and play. Stop by your local Cricket store or authorized retailer and pick up your Nokia 5170i today. Nokia, connecting people. Serve Wireless. Your phone, your plan, your lifestyle. Just say, Look me up. OmniServe Wireless covers the West. Call 888 378 Omni for the location nearest you. OmniServe Wireless for the latest in phones, accessories, and rate plans. There's an OmniServe Wireless store near you. Just say, Hook me up. Qualcomm Stadium in San Diego. Tom Kirkland and Blaine Fowler enjoying a good Mountain West Conference battle. San Diego State jumped out to a 14-7 lead. Then BYU scored 24 in a row. They traded touchdowns and the Cougars now up 17 as Lon Sheriff and the Aztecs start the fourth quarter. Big third down play. Little cut back and there's Lewis. First down yardage. He has it. Picks up about six. They needed five. Isaac Kelly making the play. A good downfield block from that time. Before that screen, you're going to throw it to the outside to Lewis, but you're depending on your linemen to slip their blocks, let the guys through, and then go down and get the second level, get the linebackers. That time, that San Diego State front did a good job of getting out in front of Lewis. Is that the inside screen to the receiver? Is that the designer play of this season? You see it all around the NFL and college now. You know, it kind of started to catch on this last year. And, and you see teams with quick receivers running it all the time. Now everybody's running, whether you have quick right. receivers or not. It's an easy throw for your quarterback. Ned, and there's a reverse. And they're going to try something off of it. Nothing there. And that play's blown up as the Cougars sniff it out. Isaac Kelly once again making the play. Try. Let's look at the stats through the third quarter brought to you by Delta Airlines, who asks, how do you want to fly, Blaine? Well, now the total yard's starting to balance out a little bit. 305 for Boeing, 375 for San Diego. Look at the rushing yardage for San Diego State, 261. 32 rushes for 221 yards and two touchdowns for Larry Ned contributing to that big rushing total for San Diego. But look at the time of possession, 25-49 for San Diego State, 19-11 for BYU. The big thing is turnovers got San Diego State behind, and now BYU's offense. Here's Ryan Denny with a sack ball on the ground. Talk about big plays. Blaine Cougars recover. Jeff Coward inside. Four-yard line. Boy, and as soon as I say turnover, there you go. it happens again. Big pass rush that time. Lon Sheriff doesn't feel it coming from his blind side, the back side. Then he goes inside, and boom, picks up another sack. 
if the ball had bounced up to Jeff Coward like it bounced up to Luke Staley, Coward would have joined Ryan Denny in the touchdown club from tonight. Coward had to pick it up, gets it back inside the five-yard line, so another turnover as Coward picks up that fumble. San Diego State continues to hurt and himself. Doman has Gabe Reed for the touchdown. A nice touch on the football by Brandon Doman that time, up and over the linebackers to Gabriel Reed. BYU right on their average. Came in averaging about 49 a game, leading the nation. They have knocking on the door to 45 right here, and it's just the beginning of the fourth quarter. And at this point, San Diego State with Larry Ned, it, you haven't taken them out of the game, but you've done a pretty good job at limiting what they can do to come back. There's Matt Payne ripping another extra point. Sixth extra point of the night. Ted Tolner looks up at the scoreboard, and he knows they've taken care of business, but too many big plays for BYU, too many good bounces, and too many opportunistic things that were they completed and put in the end zone. Each game this year, we'll be looking for the hook-me-up reception of the game presented by OmniServe Wireless. Your phone, your service, your lifestyle. Now here's your OmniServe reception of the game. Hey, hook me up. There's Gabe Reed. Right, touchdown. And BYU, a good play call there. When they've been down in close, they've been handing the ball to Luke Staley. This time he used Luke Staley as a decoy. You fake the ball to him, get the linebackers to jump up and defend the run and throw it over the top to your tight end. Gabe Reed's second touchdown reception. The tight end's again a big part of the Cougar offense. Doug Jolly with a career last week, 177 yards, setting a new Mountain West Conference record for receiving yardage, three touchdowns. He has four touchdown receptions for the season. Reed with two. Spencer Neen, who's the starter, has three touchdown receptions. By Doman right now, 15 of 19, 154 yards, two touchdowns. He's now thrown 22 touchdown passes and just two interceptions. They've been very, very efficient. Here's Dante Gamble again. Edmonds kicks it off, and we're going to get a chance to see Gamble at about the 10. Nothing doing as BYU wraps him up. Kobe Buckwald, first time we've called his name tonight. Kobe Buckwald, one of the stalwart standouts on the BYU cover teams. He also comes in on third down situations for BYU, and obviously passing situations because he runs so well. He's a linebacker that runs a 4-5, and he just mugs Gamble on that play. 6'1", 218-pounder from Sunset, Utah. The sophomore get a lot more playing time next year when Justin Enna and Isaac Kelly move on. Well, for San Diego State right now, you still have to involve Larry Ned in the offense. Oh, yeah. You've got to run occasionally, but as you look at the numbers from Lon Sheriff, 12 of 26, 120 yards, the two interceptions, very costly, but you need to throw him the football. you got to hand him the football, but you also need there you to go. throw him the football. There's Ned plowing up the middle for another 10 or 11. That'll put him up at about 231 at 285 earlier this year. And if you're wondering what the single game Aztec record is, there's a guy you may have heard of named Marshall Falk. He, he galloped for 386 yards back in 1991 against the University of the Pacific. It was the NCAA record at that time, 386. So Ned has some work to do. My Marshall Falk was very exciting as a college player. He still still continues to be, if not the most dominant, one of the most dominant players in the National Football League. He can do everything. So Larry Ned is in very rarefied company. Sheriff with a big pass out to the corner. Hooks up with Jeffrey Webb. Brandon Heaney brings him down. And we talked about Webb. Brandon Heaney for BYU is quietly having a very solid game for BYU corner. They've been looking for an answer to the corner opposite Gennaro Guilford. And he's done a, a very solid job at covering some speedy wide receivers on deep routes this evening here in San Diego. So they may have found the answer at that other corner. Second and three for Lon Sheriff. Gone the whole game. Thought we might see Adam Hall. But it's been Sheriff's game. The out route's picked off or should have been. Gennaro Guilford will tell us he should have been running into the end zone on that one. Anticipated nicely and hit him right in that number four. Guilford was sitting down, and you see why he's such a good cover guy. BYU's best cover guy, because he can break on the football. 
watch as he sees the pass. He sees the receiver break down and then immediately breaks on the football. The ball came up too late from Sheriff. If you're going to throw that hitch, the ball has to be thrown as your receiver's breaking down. And as soon as he stops, the ball should be on him and not allow that corner to break on the football. That should have been six points the other way. Question about that. Third and three now. Aztecs have to sustain a drive and put some points on the board. There goes Ned up the middle and bounces off a couple of people, picks up close to seven, eight yards, and easily picks up the first down. Up in that 240-yard range for the game, and, and every time Larry Ned gets the football, it seems as though he's able to pick up positive yards. Look at the solid block he's up. And you'll notice there's some good holes there, but he doesn't need a very big hole. He sees any sliver in there, and he gets himself going vertical right up the field. And there's his numbers, 34 for 240 yards and two touchdowns. What a great game for Larry Nett. And we weren't sure we were going to see him tonight. Yeah, this is on a, <laughs> a, a, an injured left ankle. Right. And that was Justin Anna fighting through some people and laying a good licking on Lon Sheriff, causing the incomplete pass. Anna was on a loop, came on a blitz and looped to the outside, unaccounted for by that San Diego front, and this is what happens as a, as a quarterback, you're standing in there, Denny, they brought inside and brought Enna to the outside, takes a hit right under the left arm, and that's why you see quarterbacks wearing those flak jackets, because uh, you couldn't survive in today's game. You get so many hits so in the exposed. midsection of that body. You see that, you know, yep. right here, that big flak jacket on, every, every quarterback wears one, because you're so exposed standing up there in the pocket. Second and 10, they'll try Ned. There's Paul Walkenhorst again, sniffing it out and bringing him down. Walkenhorst has come up nicely in the later stages of this game and run support, made some big hits on Ned. Boy, and when BYU's needed a stop, it seems like Walkenhorst is the guy that's been able to get into the backfield, come down the line of scrimmage, and get Larry Ned before he gets started. They put him into negative yardage on that, lost, lost one, and it's another third and 11 for Sheriff. Well, inside screen or a little inside route, that didn't work. It's Justin Enna all over J.R. Tolliver. The exchange giving each other a little bit of the business and uh, here comes the punt team. Well, and that was sniffed out by Justin Anna. Tolver upset that that was covered so well, but Anna saw that screen coming and was right on top of Tolver behind the line of scrimmage on the screen. Didn't allow him to catch the football. You see why this young man is leading the conference and punting his numbers going up. Came in averaging 44-6, so those will go up. coming here there's another halo violation so BYU will probably get it five yards from the spot of the flag as this play doesn't really matter the end of it Wait. that halo violation the, the the halo play really should should do away with the fair catch because nobody can hit yeah, you anyway you don't need to get two catch. yards and if they're close to you they have to stop right and, and wait, and so you can catch it basically anytime you want to. Now you're going to take a hit, but take a look as uh, Regal settles Big under this punt. Defense, 15 yards, first down. Yeah, it's, Gre it's Greg Taylor, a defensive back that's on that punt team that gets too close and actually bumps the return back. And tacked on 15 yards. Gary Croton up 24 in the fourth. <laughs> Grab the wheel, drop your feet, and get your rave on in the 2002 Ford Focus. With the new powertrain extended service plan that keeps you motoring for five years or 100,000 miles. Unlike other such plans, this one's fully transferable, and you get it at no extra cost. And now get 0% financing on a 2002 Focus. The new Ford Focus. What a rush. Get into a new Focus today at your local Ford store. Lisa, bedtime. Oh, please, Dad. Can we watch another movie on our big screen? Well, how about this one? What is it? It's called 
Lisa goes to bed. Oh, Dad. <laughs> Look what I found. Hey, what's that called? The Daddy-Daughter Late Night Movie. Let an R.C. Willie home theater system make memories for your family. Nobody beats R.C. Willie. Wireless service is like sports. It's fun. It's business. It's keeping in touch. Get in the game with AT&T Wireless. Sign up before November 3rd for $39.99 AT&T Wireless Digital Advantage Plan and get up to 3,400 minutes a month for life. Sign up for a two-year contract and get up to an additional $135 in savings and a free Ericsson phone. We support the game on and off the field. Visit your local AT&T Wireless authorized dealer. You can be confident when you fill up with quality Sinclair gasoline with SG2000. It's simply unbeatable Sinclair, a proud sponsor of college football telecasts on Sports West as Luke Staley grinds out some tough yards going the other way. You see the score by quarter. Actually, since it was 14-7 early in the second quarter, favor the Aztecs, BYU's runoff 38 out of the next 45 points. They've outscored them 38-7 since then, is what I'm trying to say. You Just said taking it, it you over. Said it. <laughs> In a roundabout way, I guess I did. And we just found out Washington State lost, so the day started with a whole bunch of unbeatens in the country. You know, all the talk about the BCS, there are exactly... Tough week for Ken Delgado, the defensive coordinator, former line coach in Utah, San Jose State guy. And, uh, of course, I mean, he has a lot of company. Defensive coordinators trying to stop BYU. It, it, it's a very difficult task, and now he has to find a way to try to slow down Charlie Peterson. He has some amazing numbers as the backup to Brandon Doman. Throwing it out there, and there's... Reno Mahe down the sideline, putting on his moves. You see he's healthy once again. And Gary Croton will not, he will not hand off. He, he's going to play his offense. They're, they're going to try to score more. That's right, and they've got to get Charlie Pearson to production. There's a flag at the end of that play. Uh, Mahe shows you what he can do in the open field. And the Aztecs will tack on another 15 yards. Remember this drive started with a 15-yard so 30 yards on this drive have been courtesy of the Aztecs. Well, watch the play. Peterson has been very impressive when he's been in games this year with throwing the football. Very tight, good velocity on the football. Stands in there and delivers us. And this is what Mahi does out in the open field. Watch him cut sideways. He'll be going up the field and he just runs up the field and then sideways and makes people miss and he'll come back up and make another man miss he's just very elusive in the open field and then that little nudge at the end is what draws the flag didn't seem like much to draw a 15 yarder but it did draw the 15 yard flag san diego state penalties hurt them peterson on the little comebacker to justin anderson couldn't complete it but mentioned peterson's numbers he's now 23 of 31 on the season for close to 250 yards a couple of touchdowns and Charlie actually holds a very special record at BYU he broke Jim McMahon's record last year going 164 passes without an interception which especially in this system with how they put a premium on not turning the ball over and they've done it very well all year he fits perfectly in with what coach Croton's trying to do smart quarterback who can move around Peterson staying in there. Sides, hey, I'm going to run. I got some room. And goes down inside the 15. Close to a first down. And that was a good coverage downfield. Not a lot of pressure that time on Peterson. Had a lot of time in the pocket. Went to his first, second, and third receivers and then had to tuck it and run it. Brandon Doman, unless there's a major change of events here, his night is done. And again, Incredible numbers for that young man. 22 touchdowns on the season, just two interceptions, and has once again put up 45. And this offense continues to roll as they knock on the door for more. Well, you've got four receivers and a bunch on the left side over here, and one off to the right. And Peterson's going to try to run for the first down, and he may have it. 
Steven Larson, another red shirt freshman. And we talked about the BCS a little bit, and the day started, Blaine, with eight unbeatens in the country. Oklahoma lost, Virginia Tech lost, UCLA lost, Maryland lost, Washington State lost. Guess what? There are three unbeatens left. Nebraska, Miami, BYU. And if you think there was controversy and a lot of rancor last week when the BCS poll came out, just wait to see what these five losses by unbeaten teams will do to the BCS rankings. Oh, yeah. And and, and it's an imperfect system, and it's not going to work until we get a playoff. We all agree on that. Now, the Oklahoma-Nebraska, that's not so, you know, you right. knew one of those, those teams well, exactly. had to lose. They played each other. And, and basically, the BCS won play, too. And it was a great football Absolutely. game. We got to catch some of that this afternoon. Uh, so I don't think that the team that lost that game will lose a ton of ground. No, no. Virginia Tech losing at home to Syracuse, that'll hurt them. Well, Syracuse is on a roll right now. Absolutely. UCLA lost at Stanford. Maryland gave up, I believe, uh, 52 to Florida State. Maybe it was 42. They, they gave up a ton of points and lost at Florida State again. That's not a bad loss. And Washington State lost to Oregon tonight. So Gary Croton, things opening up nicely for him take a look at winning streaks Miami of course with that 17 game streak Nebraska now at 11 and then BYU with nine puts them at third and division one 1a in the NCAA there goes Staley has some room has first down easily and he's inside the 10. Keep in mind, Brian McDonald Ashford, very, very good backup to Luke Staley most of the season, had five touchdowns, had surgery just a couple days ago. They went in, and it's a full ACL reconstruction. So a very capable backup is out of the lineup. And Luke Staley, a very, very important part of this team, obviously. And he's had another huge game tonight. Well, and he would get spelled from time to time by McDonald. There would be very little drop-off, if any, when McDonald was in there. And, and what that means is less rest for Luke Staley. And he's looking for number three. Carries people in. Luke Staley just became BYU's single-season touchdown leader. 17th score of the season. Another three tonight. He just continues to pile up the numbers. And uh, has there ever been a guy in Provo with a better number for a touchdown score than six? I guess it can't possibly be. Well, and he he uh, is in there again inside the five-yard line with three guys on him and refuses to be brought down, just drives in for the touchdown. And once again, the Cougars have broken the 50-point mark they will continue to lead the nation in scoring and a game effort by the Aztecs, but just not enough firepower for Ted Tolner tonight. When it comes to buying your next car, there's someone you already know. With this guy, you're never far from the best in price, selection, and service. Larry H. Miller. After all, you know this guy. Polaris, it's not just a sled, it's a priority. Pay $79 per month or see your dealer for nothing down, no payments, and no interest until April 2002. I depend on my Ford truck to take me to the great outdoors of Utah. And you can depend on the Utah Auto Collection Ford truck and SUV dealers to have the area's best 2001 model year-end closeout with the absolute best and lowest prices on all remaining 2001 models. And when the mountains call, it's nice to know I can trust the value and quality of my truck built Ford Tough. So get outdoors and go to the 2001 model year-end closeout only at the Utah Auto Collection Ford dealers. 
Stay up late for tonight's special NBC movie. Kevin Klein stars in the comedy In and Out tonight at midnight on KSL 5. We are back at Qualcomm Stadium in San Diego. Luke Staley. That guy about 6'1", uh, and he's listed at 218. Well, he's about 230. He's, he's a fast linebacker, and, and there it is. 17 touchdowns this season, three more tonight. 165 yards, 17 carries, just scored his third touchdown. And with Colorado State looming Thursday, a quick turnaround week, I mean, this speaks to the enthusiasm of their head coach because probably he'd like to get Staley out of the game. And I know, I mean, know he's done now, but that last chance is clearly a chance for him to set the record. Oh, absolutely. Gamble. Gamble with a nice move. The guy's got, he's going to break one soon. Really fast and bounces off people. Yeah, you know, back to that last drive. Kevin, uh, or Brandon Doman out of the game. Really, Luke Staley probably should have been out of the game. Mm -hmm. And Gary Cro Croton probably should have had him out at that point. You got to keep him healthy. He is the franchise in that backfield. But Croton be, is, is very aware of records and things. He has people keep track of that. Last week, he put Jolly back in the football game to break the Mountain West Conference receiving record for one play. And you know that he's aware that Staley's one touchdown away from that record. Puts him in for that, and now he's out of the game. Shoulder pads off. 17 rushes, 165 yards. He's done. Yeah. San Diego State trying to rally. I think... Uh, you can share the enthusiasm, and, and, and certainly Luke Staley was aware of what was going on. But with his history of, you know, he, he hasn't played a full season, which is which is why he said this is this season so special for him. He didn't come off any off-season surgery for the first time. He's feeling really good. But with Brian McDonald Asher just going down, and you know, the Cougar fans back in Utah are probably get him out of there. But yet you understand the enthusiasm, and and plus I think you you want to establish in the minds of everybody in the conference and around the nation that, you know. It's okay to, for him to have big numbers and get used to it because he's going to. Well, for San Diego State now, Sheriff is in the game still, but you, you don't see Larry Ned in there any longer with that ankle injury, and they need him to finish this season up. With uh, six minutes left in this game, they're trailing by 31. Derek Simmons now has come in, and he was the guy who was looking forward to a big game activity, but Larry Ned said, you know what, my ankle's okay, and romped for 239 yards and a couple of touchdowns on 35 carries. A, a, just a warrior effort for the guy who leads the conference in rushing, and, you know, again, I had mentioned it earlier, Luke Staley making it quite a one-two punch, the top two rushers in the, in the conference, putting on a big show, and you see the big bag of ice on both of the running backs there. Uh, no loss of ice on their bodies. Sheriff with a good strike right into the arms of his receiver there. And unable to be gathered in by Fale Pomelli. Well, and there's another ball. Sheriff's had some balls dropped today. And that one was one that should have been caught, should have been a first down. And now Ted Tolan's forced to send the punt team out again. And Ryan Denny, who's probably done for the afternoon, Sign a few autographs here in Qualcomm Stadium on the sideline. Well, the Aztecs gear up for New Mexico next week. They come in, and that's always a bruising battle. We'll have this. We'll have it right here on Sports West for you. And you know, I think you know, coaches have to go away, and the players have to go away, thinking that they they had a pretty good game plan here. Ball on the ground. Aztecs have it, but there's also a flag. So we'll see if there was another halo violation. And that one an interesting one because it would almost look as if BYU's own player got in between. Yep. But the Aztecs had a lot of things going their way except for a couple of bounces. This could be a lot closer game. And, you know, Ted Tolner is getting used to these kinds of speeches and having to... Let's listen to Claire Gosman here. Kick catch interference. Violation of the two-yard... Five yards. Yeah. He's a good teacher of young men, very positive coach, very clear on what he wants to get done here, and uh, he's going to look at these last several games for the Aztecs as a chance to continue to try to turn things around this season. This one, though, has already gotten away. We know two things about wireless phones. One, we need them. Two, we don't have time to figure out those ridiculous rate plans. With two kids, I don't have time to breathe. But now there's Cricket. With Cricket, I get all the local calls I want for one low monthly price, even incoming calls. So now we know everything we need to know about wireless. Well, 
Except for why the heck they call it cricket. <laughs> now get a Nokia phone for just $69.99 plus tax, and your first month of service is free. We'd better check the oil, Dino. Come on, Josh, we're late. Okay, you'd better do it, Dino. I can do that. Ah, just fine. Of course, I don't worry much, because I always fill up with quality Sinclair gasoline with SG2000 that keeps my engine running clean and smooth. Take it from Dino. Sinclair with SG2000 is simply unbeatable. Hey, Dino, where'd you get those sunglasses? Say goodbye to your fork and hello to McDonald's new Sausage McGriddle sandwich. The revolutionary new way to eat pancakes and sausage. Two griddle cakes, a sausage patty, and the taste of maple syrup in every bite. The new Sausage McGriddle sandwich, only at McDonald's. How's that fork situation? Copy. We're gonna need backup. Future Cougar, enjoying the festivities here tonight. From 14-7 San Diego State, it's been 45-14 Cougars. A little out route. There's Ned Stearns. Actually, my, my math. That's why I wasn't a math major. <laughs> You know, that, you talked about Gary Cronin on the last drive. He's not the kind of guy that is going to just sit there and run the football. When he gets his young players in, you see an entire new offensive line in there, mm -hmm. new backs, a new quarterback. They have to have an opportunity to run his offense. And so they're going to get in there, and they're going to run what he runs. They're going to mix it up a little bit. They'll probably be a little more conservative than he would be with the first offense. But he's not going to be afraid to run the different things that they have in their offense and let them learn. Charlie Peterson Woo! running a little option. Now they look ahead to a quick turnaround, getting ready for Colorado State. And the Rams will come in 3-1 and one in the conference. We wondered about their preparation. Now that guy is a preparation freak. He's, he looks at tons of tape over the weekend, and he, and he has... You know, he, he makes it a point to never look ahead to anybody who won't break down tape or anything during the season of anybody and, except the team they're playing. Peterson going long. And that is going to go for another touchdown. That's Toby Christensen. Sixty-eight yards, and we mentioned they will not hold back. Ted Tolner looks up. It's 58-21 now. And Charlie Peterson coming out. He's looking out into the left flat first and then looks at the backside post. Wide open is Toby Christensen. There was an underneath route to throw there, and he chooses to go deep to Toby Christensen, who's wide open on the backside, working out there against uh, Nunez, a, a strong safety. And Ted Tolner cannot be happy with that. 58 points now on the board for BYU and a big play and BYU's throwing offense late in the fourth quarter. Christensen's first touchdown. A memorable one and the extra point is added on and 59-21 Cougars. The fifth time this season they've gone over 50. They just hung 63 on Air Force last week. That's a fine line between running your offense and pouring it on and I'm sure you could hear some scattered boos here. But it's hard to tell young players, you know, not to go ahead and execute the offense and run because, you know, if there's an injury next play, then Charlie Peterson's your starting quarterback and, and you know, you need him to be running the offense. So Mike Boric and, and Gary Croton, will, they, they are relentless. They will just continue to run the plays that are in their playbook, and there are a lot of plays in that playbook. Well, and you know, teams pointed have pointed to Nebraska over the last several years and said, man, they get ahead in the game, they just keep on right. scoring. And they're a big-time running football team. They continue to run the ball and dominate and score points. And, uh, and BYU stays exactly with their offense here, like it or not, and they throw the football up the field. And many would say that, you know, at that point, it's time to just run the football and try to run the clock out. 
And there's a lot of swagger with this new coaching staff, and they put in the effort, they put in the hard work. Preparation is immense. Another ball on the ground. Let's see who gets that. The way things are going, it probably will be BYU. They're going to try to pull the carnage off the pile and see who comes away at the bottom. And it's the Cougars again. They could break 60 here pretty easily. For well, anything that can go wrong for San Diego State has gone wrong. And, and you know, this started in the second half of their football game last week against Ohio State. They played a marvelous first half. We're leading 12-6 in the third quarter. And take a look. It's a short high kick. And, and unsure of who should feel that that time, Underwood tries to take it, bounces off his shoulder pads, and out in front takes a big bounce away from him where he can't get back to the football. And we, BYU recovers it. We've seen more than our share of bouncing, fumble, free balls, haven't we tonight? Well, and been BYU, BYU has been fortunate to come up with every single one. Four turnovers for San Diego State. It was five turnovers in the second half last week that just killed San Diego State. Chris Stevens, the junior, 6'1", 203-pounder from Conard Gronert Park, California, getting a carry. When for BYU, it's an opportunity to work with a line that's going to be rebuilt next year. You've got Jason Sukanik, the center, who's a senior. Aaron McCubbins, the right guard, who is a senior. And Teague Whiting, the left guard, who is a senior, that will be out of the middle of that offensive line. And so we'll be reworking that line next year. Dustin Reichert, the left tackle, Ben Archibald, the, the right tackle, both juniors will be back. But, but Gary Croton has got to replace the interior of that offensive line. I'll try him. Stevens again, bouncing it outside. And he'll lose a couple back Chris Stevens, the ball carrier for the Cougars. to the 15. Inter interesting situation for Gary Now you got a third down and long, and you're down there in scoring territory. Do you let your young guys throw the football and try for a first down, or do you just run the ball and get out of here with a 59-21? Luke Staley working with the crowd a little, signing some autographs. Meantime, we'll see what Charlie Peterson comes up with on third and eight. There goes Stevens again up inside the 10. It'll be short of the first down and a fourth down decision. Coach Croton's gone for, gone for it on fourth down quite a bit, and we may see it again. I, I think they will here. This, this is a situation where you could line up and kick the, kick the field goal, but uh, fourth and two inside the 10, you, you just let the young players go for it, and if you don't get it, you just turn the ball over. It's no big deal. Which doesn't, doesn't say he, he won't pass it here. Oh, I think you'll see just a straight lead to the tailback on this play. Right, and he bounces it outside and near first down yardage. We'll see, they'll have to measure that. Well, if he got it, he got it by just a tiny bit. It'll be very, very close. And they say, no way, San Diego State, they're not even going to measure. I don't think they'll get any argument no. from either side on that one. There's Adam Hall, the backup quarterback we thought we might see earlier in the game, but Lon Sheriff played valiantly here, had a couple of breaks go against him, as has been the story all season, and now Adam Hall transferred from Texas. At the conclusion of each game, we select the AT&T MVP presented by AT&T Wireless Authorized Dealers. Wireless from AT&T, your world close at hand. And the AT&T MVP for the game is Larry Ned with kudos to Luke Staley. But Larry Ned didn't practice all week. Painful high ankle sprain, 35 carries, 239 yards. Getting a little love from the coaching staff there. A couple of touchdowns. He did everything he, he could do and more tonight. 
Well, and typically, you know, you, you see the MVP go to a, a person on the winning team. Doesn't have to be that way. But when you rush for 239 yards, one of the great performances in the conference this year, it has to go to Larry Nett, even in a losing effort. Just amazing what he was able to do. And he kept him in the game. He did all he could do, put him in a position to have a lead and you know, then they started to, some crazy bounces went BYU's way. They were opportunistic and they, they turned some turnovers into touchdowns. And they got a little away from them, but now he's gonna look ahead to New Mexico and probably won't practice this week. He's already shown <laughs> maybe the fresh legs are yeah, better for he him. Shouldn't practice. Hey coach, I don't need to practice. He See what I mean? Practice. <laughs> Hall's going to put it up, lobbing it down there, and that's intercepted. It's picked off, and that could go. That's Mike Sumko taking advantage of the lob job from Adam Hall. And BYU down deep once again, but with just a minute to go. This is about to wind down. The Cougars with another convincing win you see it's a little bit of a lob job he had two people right there though two yeah, receivers he, he was trying to go to the outside didn't even see the underneath coverage it was coverage on top and coverage underneath on the receiver lobbed it out there the ball hung in the air an easy pick that time for BYU and Cougars will take a knee they'll Wind the clock down, they will get to 8 0. This Sports West telecast was directed by Russ Merrill. The technical director is Bradley Cleven. Graphics coordinator, Brian Mangum. And the executive producer of Sports West Productions is Michael Miner. Our thanks to our entire crew here in San Diego. Real bang up job. Appreciate all the help here in San Diego. And Coach Croton and his Cougars, one of three unbeatens left in college football, with another thumping here. Well, BYU got some breaks in this football game, but you've got to give credit to Gary Croton. Again, his offense in the second half especially was able to move the football. They're very, very explosive. 59 points, even in the face of four turnovers, is a lot of points to put up on a very, very good San Diego State defensive football team. No question about it. Ted Tolner, class act. Remember, went into Provo last year and and shocked Lavelle Edwards in their last meeting with a last second kick and uh, a lot of admiration there between those coaches. Of course, uh, Tolner, a former assistant at BYU as well. Right, Ted Tolner was the quarterback coach there. Coach Jim McMahon in his senior season, 1981. And uh, Gary Croton in the... Uh, right about now, he's asking... BYU football sports information director Jeff Reynolds. Hey, where is the tape on Colorado State? Boy, he, we got to start breaking it down tonight. He is a stickler for preparation. There's Larry Ned. Has to be disappointed. See him hobbling just a little bit yeah. on that left ankle now. And uh, Paul Tidwell, BYU's recruiting coordinator and running back coach. And he's asking if he has any eligibility yeah, he's left, like, right? Hey. <laughs> hey, if you transfer. Well, he, he had a great afternoon or a great evening of football, did Larry Ned. And so did that guy, Brandon Doman. Had a little more pressure in the first half. Had a lot of guys in his face. Had to take some sacks. But ends up 15 out of 19 for 154 yards, two touchdowns. And how about 10-0? Every game he started at BYU, which was his, his, his dream to go play quarterback there, took him a while to fight through the system and get some time. But since they made him the starter, going back to last year, 10-0. That's getting it done. Well, all he does is win. All right. We're going to... Step aside for a minute. We'll come back to wrap it up here from Qualcomm. BYU, 59-21 over the Aztecs. Monstrous excitement, selection, and savings. Where this week at Gene Harvey Chevrolet's Monster Closeout. Prices are slashed to zero over invoice on all 2001 Chevys and interest-free financing on all new 2001 and 2002 Chevrolets to keep America rolling. Yes, interest-free and zero over invoice on all closeout 2001 Suburbans, Tahoes, and Silverado HD pickups. All zero over invoice and interest-free. Now at Gene Harvey Chevrolet. We'll be there. Gene Harvey Chevrolet. In American Fork. Here, they'll come to soar, where the eagle glides effortlessly, trailing wings.
is a fire. Light the fire within. Here on KSL 5, your home for the games. Which financial institution is the leader in construction loans in Utah Valley? It's the local bank with branches from Sandy to St. George. The bank with lifetime free checking. The bank that is second to none in long-term mortgages and refinancing provided by the friendliest, most knowledgeable professionals in the state. That's right. The answer is Far West Bank. For all your construction and mortgage loan needs, Far West Bank is everything your bank should be. Far West Bank is what your bank should be. Chevrolet has helped keep America moving. And we're not about to stop now. Chevrolet is proud to offer interest-free financing on every new car and truck we build. Every new Chevrolet, interest-free. It's one way we can help keep America rolling forward. Chevrolet, we'll be there. Tonight's edition of NBC's Dateline will be seen at a special day and time. Watch Dateline tomorrow night at 11.30 on KSL 5. Cougars came in averaging almost 49 points a game, number one in the nation. They add to that number with a thumping of the San Diego State Aztecs and this McDonald's play of the game. Brought to you by your local McDonald's dealer, where we love to see you smile. Here's the McDonald's play of the game. Blaine, it kind of sums up the way things went. A couple of bad bounces, and the Cougars score a touchdown. Well, and Lon Sheriff was, was doing well. Larry Nett was running the football. They dropped back to pass, and a good throw to the outside. A lot of steam on the ball. Larry Nett not able to come up with it. And on the tip ball, Isaac Kelly comes up with the interception and takes it all the way into the end zone for the touchdown. And then he spikes it, which... Of course, brought up one of our favorite calls, the celebration penalty. That's an argument for another day. BYU now, one of three unbeatens left in college football. Five fell today, but not tonight here in San Diego as the Cougars pull away 59-21. Okay, kids. Mom, when you, we have our phones. We can check in. Okay. Introducing the family share plan from Verizon Wireless. Now your family can share a ton of minutes on one calling plan. Hey, Mom, crimson or candy apple red? With up to four separate lines. Is 20 feet enough? Hurry in and buy one Nokia phone for $29.99 and get up to three free with activation. Honey, do we need an extra hand? And now get an extra 3,000 night and weekend minutes to share. Just call 1-800-2-JOIN-IN today. Now that's something the whole family can get excited about. Verizon Wireless. Join in. Are you ready, Mom? Yep. Happy, Happy birthday! birthday. Oh, wow! It's even got an ice maker. Oh, it does. Well, what do you think? It's just the one I wanted. Don't cry, Mom. We got a good deal. We got it at R.C. Willie. <laughs> Let's go see it. For home furnishings, nobody beats R.C. Willie. Your Ford stores want to drive America with absolutely no interest loans on Ford cars, trucks, and SUVs. For the first time ever, pay no interest for the life of your loan on Ford vehicles. That's interest-free financing on cars like Focus and Taurus, trucks like Ranger and F-Series, and no interest on Ford SUVs. Interest-free financing from your Heart of the West Ford stores to help drive America. Your typical airline credit card gives you one mile for every dollar you spend. But only the Delta Sky Miles credit card from American Express gives you that. Plus, you'll always get double miles at gas stations, home improvement stores, and on Delta tickets. On top of 5,000 bonus miles just for getting the card. Watch how quickly all those extra miles add up to your free vacation travel. The Delta Sky Miles credit card. Faster than your typical airline credit card. Call 1-800-SKY-MILES to apply now. This Sports West College football presentation is brought to you by Delta Airlines, who asks, how do you want to fly? Panasonic wireless phones for the way you live. Dodge, in a perfect world, everything would be different. And by your local AT&T wireless authorized dealers. Your world, close at hand. Now let's look at the final stats brought to you by Delta Airlines, who asks, how do you want to fly? And 
Lane, what do you see there? Boy, you know, total yards, 450 for BYU, 415 for San Diego State. Big game rushing for both teams. The turnovers right here, that's really what killed San Diego State. Five turnovers in the football game. Individually, Staley, 17 rushes for 165 yards. Doman was 15 of 19 for 154, two touchdowns. And then Ned for San Diego State, 35 for 239, an amazing night. And Sheriff finished 14 of 32, one touchdown, but two costly interceptions for the quarterback for San Diego State. No question, Aztecs put up a fight, but too many bounces went the way of the Cougar. And another 59 points here tonight. Verizon Wireless provides exclusive cellular communications for Sports West Productions. Verizon Wireless, simple, affordable, national. Join in. This has been a presentation of Bonneville Sports West Productions in association with KSL TV and Channel 4 San Diego. For more about Sports West Productions, go online at www.gosportswest.com. For Blaine Fowler and the entire Sports West crew, this is Tom Kirkland saying so long and good night from San Diego. The scene for this upcoming football battle.